Hello, campers, and welcome back to another weekend of the Rule Talk here at the Camp Dragon Online Podcast. Thank you all so much for listening in once again. We really appreciate everybody that's been supporting us so far. As a quick overview, we, some of the Dungeon Masters here at Camp Dragon Online, are really quickly just discussing different parts of the 2024 rules book. Last week, we finished up discussing the core class reprints and updates, and today we're going to go over some of the spells that really stuck out to us as as these DMs, and maybe a little bit about some other parts as well, if we have time for it, talking a little bit about the equipment, maybe some of the feats, so on and so forth, before, you know, not really getting too deep into some of the other books that have since been released since the recording of this episode. And um, with me today, of course, are four of my wonderful Dungeon Masters that I am very proud to work with. Um, one of them could make it today, and they will be sorely missed. But as always, I am your head Dungeon Master, Daniel W. Yi. I use he, him pronouns, and with me today is he who shall be named. I'm sorry, uh, Brendan, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. My name is Brendan. Thank you for joining us. Uh, hopefully you guys have been enjoying these uh, micro episodes, uh, and I'm excited to talk about them today. Great, fantastic. Uh, and which uh, which pronouns do you use, Brendan? I use he, him, Dan. Thank you for asking. Of course, perfect. Uh, let's keep it going with uh, Phantasmal Killer, I mean, uh, Race. Hey, everybody. My name is Race Frank Hauser. I use they, them pronouns, and I want to use my little quick second here to give a shout out. Friend of the show, Kyle Malone, my, sale, my Sweetwater sales rep. Shout out, look, looking at you, buddy. You know what Sweetwater is. And, um, <laughs> They're how I get my audio stuff. Okay, great. Well, the, yeah, friend of the show indeed. We, we <laughs> love Sweetwater here. Recommended to me this okay. awesome uh, Behringer XLR uh, X, uh, interface and hooked me up with a sweet t-shirt as well on top of that. Great. Well, if Shout they out, want to the actually sponsor us, you know, <laughs> that would be awesome as well. I'll, ble- I'll bleep out Sweetwater. There you go. We could always use money. <laughs> Uh, Let's keep it going with uh, the ex-sanguinator himself, DJ. Hello, my name is the ex-sanguinator. My name is DJ Aladidi. I use he, him pronouns, and I'm excited to talk about spells. Pew, pew. All right. And our linguistic expert himself, Greg. (laughs) Wow, just putting me on the spot. Hello, I'm Gregory, he, him pronouns, and I am not excited to talk about spells. Ooh. Oh, well, we got a little little shake up here. Well, just know for a uh, fact, Greg, that we're excited to talk to you. Yes. Well, that's unfortunate for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Greg's like, well, I'll we'll, hold you guys to that. We'll we'll make do as best we can. Uh, with today, just you know, we toy around with that different... people have regretted saying for <laughs> most oh of goodness. their lives. All right, let's just keep. Yeah, let's not. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> Balls. But with this day, you know, we toyed around with a couple ideas of maybe going through every single spell alphabetically, and that was shot down, uh, <laughs> despite my my desire to be as a complete and pedantic of a uh, assessor as possible. The idea is, which is a far better idea, we're going to go ahead and talk to you about some of the ones that jumped out to us individually as we as we moved around the book um, with some of these updated spells. Um, whether some of them be like retitlements or simply, you know, changing, you know, a D6 or a D4 to a D6 or so on and so forth. Uh, it should be interesting. We hope that you, our listeners, people who are excited about the 2024 rules, because, you know, despite despite what the tone of many of our episodes might have been, you know, there are a lot of cool things in the 2024 rules. And we're going to talk about both cool and things that probably weren't as cool as they could have been. Um, hopefully, hopefully some nice, nice things today. Uh, I think we'll start off with uh, race. Actually, race. What is a spell that you would really like to talk about today? And so how it's different, or how it stands out to you? Let's talk for a second about jump. Um, of course. How si- the simplification of jump? I have to say was a very smart idea. Um, just spend ten movement. Says, 10 feet of movement to jump 30 feet. You don't have to do the multiplication. You don't have to bring out the algebra. We don't have to embarrass ourselves at a table when we forget how to multiply things. Um, sure. So I think that was a very smart idea of them, just to spend 10, get 30. For for people who are listening right now, the old version of jump. Now, jump has stayed a first-level transmutation spell for anybody who is curious. You know, one minute casting. Well, now I think it's actually a bonus action in the update. It used to be an action to cast it. Now it's a bonus action. 
and it still lasts for about a minute. But the old way the spell worked was you touch a creature, can't be yourself, could be somebody else, and that creature's jump distance would be tripled until the spell ends. However, uh, for this, this was always interpreted in a variety of ways because what many people didn't understand was that this didn't change. This didn't change necessarily how far you could move because the ability, the amount you could jump for most parts of movement in the 2014 rules it would still subtract your jumps movement from your overall ability to move. So your ability to jump was a lot farther because the jump was typically based off your strength score, but the amount you could move wasn't the same. But now, just like Ray said, you touch a willing creature once on each of its turns until the spell ends. The creature can jump up to 30 feet by spending 10 feet of movement. So it really is an increase in many ways. Um, why, is, uh, why does that stand out to you, Race? It's, I think it stands out to me because that's the, if you're going to simplify things, simplify it that way. Um, now granted, um, and, well, there like should be a significant yeah, too. Yeah, exactly. Um, if you're like, we, we've seen a lot of simplification, um, that we've kind of been attributing to gray washing with, uh, with a lot of the changes here in the 2024 rule book, but this is the kind of thing where simplifying it is for the better. You know, you're taking a spell that co- creates a lot of complexity of like, oh, how do I calculate my jump feet, speed, how like distance? How do I, you know, and then multiply that. It might be some odd number that's not going to fall within the five by five tile system of D&D. Let's just here, spend 10, get 30. That's, that's the way it, that I think that is a good move. And it, it's good that they specify, you know, once on each of their turns before the spell ends. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's good to have that clarification. Can't um, triple jump. Yeah, in this case, you can't triple jump or even really double jump. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, everybody else, what are your thoughts on uh, on jump on this change oh, in particular? That, that actually, that's a question of mine. So it says you can expend 30 feet by spending 10 feet of movement. Does that mean I can spend 30 feet of movement and jump 90 feet that Ooh, is interesting whether or not you can spend more than 10 feet it doesn't say it to... can't i no, see that's the kind of doesn't... thing i would rule as saying if you're like doing a like running long jump and you're like hmm. you're like yeah i mean i'd say maybe but well but you're it's the it's a spell so it doesn't yeah. it doesn't care if i'm running or not you know yeah. it doesn't it's not interested in my physical condition it's just magic mm-hmm. Yeah, so if so you're the somebody with a is... normal 30 foot, you could jump up to 90 mm-hmm. feet. Yeah, it's, once it's, on each of its yeah. turns until the spell ends, the creature can jump up to 30 feet by spending... Okay, so once oh, on each once of its turns, each of its turns. Yeah. until the spell ends, the creature can jump up to 30 feet by spending 10 feet of movement. So like that... I don't know. That, that kind of ruins it for me. Like, I don't know. I, I need, to, need to look up the movement rules, but it's one of those things where, again, yeah, some, the way that they changed it to make it easier to understand was great. But you also have a, it becomes an extremely limiting spell where it's like, oh, this spell lets you jump 30 feet. And at a point, you're just sitting there and you're like, well, why would I use this spell? Mm-hmm. I don't know. It, it seems kind of, because it's it's not, yeah, it's only It's a the kind of spell action. that only affect, that affects some builds better than others. Like, yeah. you could potentially have had, like, through the old ones, like, uh, through the old spell, a longer than 30 foot. Yeah. Or the person who has a super low strength that, could maybe have jumped like 18 feet with the spell <laughs> now can jump 30, you know, they're getting different outcome. They're getting this, yeah. uh, like a uniform jump is, outcome. It's always ever been an exploration spell. It actually falls into the, the category of spells that are really annoying to me because they, they overwrite uh, other classes capabilities of solving environmental and exploration problems. But jump is jump has only ever been an exploration spell, right? Like it doesn't really solve anything else. I guess you can kind of use it in combat to cover more distance, but you know, that's just kind of silly. That's more mechanically based. But I, I don't know. It, it's it's good. I, I like the change of the wording and the way that it works because, yeah, some people just don't want to math, which is fine. I, I think I think it would have been a cooler spell if you could, every 10 feet of movement you burn, it lets you jump up to 20. And that way you could actually scale it as a spell and it becomes, like, fun over mm-hmm. time as opposed to just like, hey, now you can jump 30 feet. Imagine being you know, the the monk and your wizard looks at you and goes, hey, you need to get over there. Slap! And suddenly you can, you know, jump 150,000 feet or whatever with your your monk's 
and it's just you know and there can be other consequences like as a dm i'd be like okay oh good luck rolling for the damage you're about to take for face planting into that wall but you know and it, it actually it actually gets rid of those fun moments where you're you sit at the table and you're like oh my god how fast would you be moving and you sit there and you google physics and you sit there with your nerdy friends and you you math out like how fast you're actually going and you base the additional damage you do on like the extra speed of. and you know i've had moments like that and it ends up being hilarious because yeah like a monster explodes but so do you because the amount of force you hit it with or the good old-fashioned i drop a door from 500 feet in the air how much additional damage does it do you know stuff like that so yeah the simplification is good in that way and it, it's good in the the less math is required but it also does limit your play right it limits your game because the rules are saying well you can only do it in this way as opposed to like giving it scaling or letting it kind of to which is very on aspects. theme with everything the 2024 rule book's been doing so far yes yes so honestly is, yeah. perfect edition <laughs> <laughs> i mean Mission i think accomplished. It, i think it does fit into the mindset that i think the people who were doing some of the designs were that they, they were like hey not every spell necessarily needs to be I, I, I'm being a little bit of fiend's advocate advocate here. Not every spell needs to be in a way that makes it so that it has complete utility for every part of the level or throughout the entire game. For me, when I look at this, I'm like, hey, this is something interesting for somebody who maybe can't use their class abilities to scale or deal with the environment or exploration as well, and wants to get a little boost to you know platform for a little bit here or there, but it doesn't scale up as well because maybe, hey, you're going to ditch it for a better spell later on down the line, maybe one that's more combat focused or one with even better utility like fly, for instance, because, you know, upper level spells do tend to make the ability to jump a little farther, a little superfluous in a lot of ways. Um, and I guess, yeah, it is, it is one of those things where like, Hey, you know, I will say the, the old jump was interesting, mostly because I think, you know, you get to triple one stat that's still, in a lot of ways, limited by your other stat, though. So for me, in some ways, this does become a little bit more viable that you get that little boost of verticality, um, you know, sometimes. And it is a bonus action now as opposed to a full action, so, you know, people can now s slap off another cantrip as well if they wanted to, which I, I think, think was them being, that's the trade-off, maybe. I don't know. I might be, fiend, I might be being Fiend's advocate right now. <laughs> I, I think you're, you're, what I'm talking about isn't necessarily the spell itself is good like the change they made is a good change it's a better spell all around the issue that i have is the issue i have with most of the stuff that we were talking about is Which the is lack fair. of its yeah. of its of its staying power and you know you just said okay well you get fly why not fly serves a very different purpose than say jump which jump can easily be used to cover more distance fly gives you the ability to fly right <laughs> like we know what fly does we know its purpose we know why that's there but it's felt like jump can give you that ability to cover more ground in a faster way and then uh, be able to kind of like take advantage of additional speed or take advantage of that aspect. I think you only get so many spells unless you're a wizard where you can get all of them. But even then you only have so many spells available to you at a point. And I think people underestimate that. In Most that people why... don't get to change them out unless they level up. Unless you're, Exactly. You know. Why shouldn't every single spell be viable your entire level of play? Why, why Why? should some be designed to be like, well, it's a first level spell. You don't really care about it. You're going to eventually forget about it. No, 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 no. Uh, screw that. Hold up, I wanna be, I wanna, yeah, I want to be able to find a, a, a way to use this spell at multiple levels of play. I want at level 20, I'm going to pull off a badass maneuver with jump. I want to see where I was at level one versus where I am now. I want to same spell. jump and jump 700 feet in the air. Yeah, hell come yeah, on. dude. <laughs> and like go <laughs> like, and then punch a dragon. Like come on. And then yeah, it's punch easy. a dragon with my extra jump damage, you know, and it's it's that that I'm missing from this. And you could have easily fixed that, right? There's a very simple if you add a scaling mechanic into the spell itself where uh get rid of the the ones on each of its turns. You can keep that whatever, but for every every x feet of movement you spend you jump X feet. That's it. That's all you had to do. And it, that that mechanic is limited by the fact that your speeds can never get that hot. You know? Even monks, like, you're never going to get to the point where the jump spell is crazy, but you can get to the point where the jump spell is awesome or hilarious or fun, as opposed to just like, now you can jump 30 feet, and then they have that hard limiter on Like, I could, could already even, do that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You could even do that with, with the upcasting, right? Instead of a, a additional 
creature, you could have said, well, now you can jump more because you have the higher levels of spell available to you. So it's that 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 kind of annoys me about the spell design here. Every everything else is great. The 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 simplification of it, the better mathing, the X for Y, that's awesome. But you lose you lose that capability that made jump actually fun in fifth edition, which is where like, well, if my jump is already kind of crazy and you cast jump on me, I'm gonna, you know, leapfrog, I'm gonna be the Final Fantasy Tactics or Dragoon, right? Where I'm gonna leapfrog onto this dragon's the face. Best class. Best exactly. class. Exactly. Who, who doesn't love a dragoon? It's like it's it's ridiculous. You're like, did I just like fly into the air and hit Move that guy with fast, the spear in his face? Stick. Let's go. Exactly. Exactly. And it gets rid of that. Like now I can't do that anymore because I can only jump 30 feet and that's not gonna have the same impact as me like disappearing into the clouds and next round showing back up <laughs> like slamming my pike into this thing's skull so you know it, it's that it's that that's the, the issue that i have with the spell in general and like the design and that's what i'm really trying to get at that's fair uh i mean it is yeah i guess it, it make. well i mean you couldn't really i feel like you couldn't really do that with the old fifth edition one either in a lot of ways because it just it was still limited by your basic movement in a lot of ways yeah of course but that's what i'm saying you come next round you drop because you can only yeah. jump so far so you have to wait, but so yeah, yeah, that's not exactly going to happen, right? D and D doesn't necessarily want you to play the game however you want to. They want you to play the game how they want you to play it. How they want you, but, of course, yeah, right. And, and that and that's that's fine. I, I'm just saying that that capability was there, and the design, the inherent design, like the base of it, doesn't want that. They want it to just be this is what this does. The end. Have fun. True and. Well, I would say in that regard, yeah, it definitely falls short of what it could be. It definitely didn't meet the absolute potential that it could. In terms of being slightly, you know, less confusing than the old one, being a bonus action so you can still get off the cantrip, it does that at least very well, but I, I would say, yeah, it still stays in this little pigeonhole and doesn't really come out. It, it does its little tiny niche thing very well, but it loses the ability to have been more. Is that kind of like the vibe we're going for right now? Is that the the energy takeaway? Bye. Like it could have, it could have been, it could have been amazing. It would have been very easy to make it amazing. I'll say once again, that's the whole book. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Could have been great. Yeah, that it really, is, yeah. it really is. It really is. If we book. had to sum up these talks in in, in like one Dragon theme, Age Fail Guard. it'd be. <laughs> I thought you said Dragon Age Fail Guard, and I was like, wow. <laughs> there you go. That's a free well, one. Uh, there, Greg. All, yes, very, very, yeah, hey, very similar. We're, we're going to get taken down by all the people who made all the bad Fail Guard um, <laughs> like, content coverage disappear near the very early releases. Oh, that's, that's amazing. <laughs> um, anyway, but yeah, yeah, it really is. It's, it just sum it up as like, missed its potential. Could have been, could have been great. Ends up just being good. And that's just a little disappointing, at, le at least for Dungeons and Dragons, which is like, again, mm -hmm. the mainstay of TTRPGs, right? It's the most popular. Indeed. It yeah. Has the, yeah, it has the most resources behind it. And to see it be a limit is just a little frustrating. That's something it's, I'd expect from us. Yeah, I totally just get been that. getting gentrified the whole time. We already knew that. I also want to talk yeah. about Bigby's hand. Um, sure. Can we hey. jump to another person's uh, spell list before we do Bigby's hand? Is that okay? Oh, yeah, 100%. 100%. Yeah. So I know. Uh, you wanted to talk about some of the phantasmal spells, Brendan. Which one would you like to start with? Yeah, so we'll just take them just the lower to the higher level. So basically, phantasmal force. Uh, the new version says uh, the target can take a the study action, which I like, uh, just the idea of a study action. Uh, and then with an intelligence check against your spell save DC, uh, if the check succeeds, the target realizes the phantasm is an illusion and the spell ends. Uh, this was the one, if you did not know, second level illusion spell open to bards, sorcerers, and wizards. Uh, basically, I think people were using it for that like kind of 2d8 psychic damage uh, and a lot of flavor, obviously, uh, basically casting an illusion at their target and creating this horrible thing in their mind that their own brain hurts them they they believe the illusion so much mm -hmm. uh and then phantasmal killer uh this one only bards and wizards i guess we we're cutting out sorcerers because they already i don't know why i don't know why you would take out sorcerers because phantasmal force was the three and then we cut it down to two but uh phantasmal killer level four illusion spell uh, not exactly the same verbiage, uh, but this one, 
the target makes a wisdom saving throw, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's tapping into the nightmares of a creature you can see within range, creating an another illusion of its deepest fears uh, visible to only that creature. And it takes 4d10 psychic damage um, and has disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls for the duration of the spell. It's a concentration spell one minute. Why do the rest of my fellow DMs think they changed it from an intelligence check, which makes sense, to a wisdom uh, wisdom save. Why do you guys think that? Because I cannot figure it out. I don't even know, man. I, mean, I think, I think, the, the, I think the legacy version was also a wisdom save for Phantasmal Killer, at least. Um, I think the I think I think the Phantasmal Force, the old one, was yeah that intelligence check. It was the same thing, investigation. But Killer, I think, was always a wisdom save. But they did improve it because it used to have the frightened condition rather than just stating its advantage on ability checks. But I think we've talked about a lot how Charmed and Frightened have been severely nerfed in 2024, so they probably changed that language knowing that it didn't used to really... Well, yeah. Everybody was fun fun design fact for this particular spell is that changing it to a Wisdom save makes it less powerful. Because if you look at the base of classes, um, there's only really one class that uses Intelligence, and that's Wizard. So unless you're Dark dealing Wizard. with... Yeah, it's it's well. Oh God, you got me with that one. Oh, you got me with that one because <laughs> you can't artificer in twenty twenty four. Um, wow. actually, Slappy rogues right. gain yeah. proficiency in intelligence saving throws. So Shut up, <laughs> uh, I, they you're not wrong. As well, but they are generally stuff. not intelligence based, right? So, like your rogue isn't going to have intelligence as their high ability score unless you're kind of a rare person playing like a mastermind or rogue. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> But yeah, so like, but the wizard is really the only class that kind of focuses it. And you're not going to come across many enemies either that have a high end score, right? Like, and they're a specific mage caster and not a sorcerer caster like most enemies that are typically in 5th edition. They generally use wisdom or con. Um, sure. Then you find it actually, up against the psychic aberrations, of course, too. Yeah. It, it makes the spell weaker by making it a wisdom save um, because more things are going to be able to probably resist it. And if you look at the difference to what the two spells does, like like force just does um, psychic damage when you interact with it. And at any point you can take the study and action to investigate it and just say, no, I'm done with this um, because they don't, it doesn't say how many times you can do that. Or if, you know, if there's additional disadvantage to doing it, you can just, every time something happens, you can stare at it and try and figure it out. And honestly, Phantasmal Force is something that you're probably going to use more on players as a DM than players are going to use on monsters as far as that goes. Because um, a lot of DMs are not good at playing monsters as individuals with their own intelligence scores. They are they're, they're more will play them as themselves, playing a character as that monster. Um, but either way, so, so the design difference here is kind of inherent in the fact that Phantasmal Killer is a damage over time spell right uh oh is it sorry uh did you do mm -hmm. all, they're both damage over time technically if you yeah use but you have, you have to force interact combat you have to choose to interact with force and typically if someone if you create the bridge in the example and someone falls off that bridge they're not going to again walk back onto the bridge and try and go back over the bridge right they're going to find another way around it because obviously they fell off the bridge so typically phantasmal force unless you're very clever is going to trigger once it's going to do its damage it could be done um, whereas Phantasmal Force is a much more powerful spell. Um, uh, anyway, it, I need a second to read the spell. Let me read the spell so, to make sure I'm not going on about bullshit. I, I will also say Phantasmal Force, you it's you can choose to make the action to investigate it. Once the illusion is cast, you are affecting a, one particular creature uh, because it is taking place specifically within their mind. It's not necessarily an illusion around them they have to interact with. You are In both cases, you're doing something directly to their mind. And it, it will do it over time unless they they can they either make a wisdom save or they make an intelligence check in the case of force to essentially dispel it somehow. But it will continue for um I think each round on the caster's turn they take damage. In the new version, they actually increase the damage significantly. The old mm -hmm. Phantasmal Force did a D6 of psychic damage. Um, yeah. As long as it was with either within the area of the phantasm or within five feet of it, I think. And it is the same limiter for how close they are to it for the new one, but then it's 2d8 psychic instead. Um, 
So you do have to be close to it, but as long as you're, you, like, people might instead choose to flee from it instead, um, which, you know, is possible. Like, there are, there yeah. are ways, I think, outside of the investigation check, which is why I think they specify the bridge that can cause people to realize it is an illusion. Like, if they fall through the bridge, but, like, they're, it's, like, safe, etc. Um, that one, that one's hard, and it's... Like, I think you're right, Greg, it does require some level of somebody engaging with it, but I think that's why they leave it up to people to be like, hey, like, exactly what does this do in this 10-foot cube? So there are options, I think, for it that you can use ongoing in combat, and you can sort of, not quite stun lock, but sort of psychically keep somebody, especially if, you know, you are doing it as a player, your DM is like, yeah, let me really play out how this goblin is going to interact with the idea of being trapped inside a witch's cauldron. Many people, when they're frightened, they might lash out, but a lot of people just shut down if something is truly terrifying. That's why, you know, when you're in your dreams and, you know, something you might be brave about in real life, you're like, I am frozen in this dream, so on and so forth. That's, you know, that's it. But, um, yeah, Phantasmo Killer, I think, was always a wisdom saving throw, at least when it comes to that. They are sort of two different spells, like two extra levels, difference well so, yeah I, I just reread phantasmal killer and honestly it's so much more powerful of a spell because it's doing 40 10 psychic at the end of your turn every single turn and yes. it just it just happens to you um yes. so it is and it gives you that disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls the attack yeah. rolls disadvantage is actually it's the is the big one that's huge yeah. and especially so, now like, that it's not frightened it's just the disadvantage the new version yeah. just says disadvantage it's a lot better See, yeah. You don't have to worry about immunities to fear. So it, exactly. it is a very powerful spell. And by making it a wisdom yeah. saving throw, you're giving it a little bit less power. You're kind of bring, scaling it down. I don't like that. I actually would have preferred it done less damage and still been an in save just to give illusionists that, that extra little capability. Um, yeah, I feel like every illusion spell should be an intelligence check or an intelligence save. Like, yeah, exactly. I, I feel like wisdom gets weighted way too much. Mm -hmm. And For I think that's sure. just that's just one of my bones to pick with this game system is like mm -hmm. if you are forming a real like adventuring party, not in the rules of DD, right? If you were just going on to like it was like 150 years ago and no 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 one had explored like the I don't know Amazon basin before. You go, who do I want? I want the strongest people and I want the smartest people with me. They go, well, what about the most charismatic people? Why would I give a fuck about the most charismatic person? <laughs> we're just going to be killing going, the natives anyway. If we're going, <laughs> damn it, race. Well, that is that uh, is what a lot of people did, yeah. You don't have to be so true and accurate all the time, race, <laughs> okay? Well, okay, hold on to interject. You actually, when you first meet the natives, you want the intelligent person because you need to figure out how to communicate with them, not how aggressively or like how to speak to them properly because like you're not going to know the language right and yes right. let's uh, we're going to ignore western imperialism here for this this podcast and let's for a brief moment as best we can yeah, yeah. We, we exist uh, in a world of D. &D. <laughs> yeah but Sorry, like i feel that. like strength strength and intelligence get such a short shrift uh like all the time almost like there's one strength-based ability it's athletics uh intelligence ability checks are by far like the least used i they're feel mostly like lore. they're almost all lore skills yeah I exactly With so the, the I, exception I, of investigation i yeah. would have liked i would have liked uh and for those of you who listen to our podcast from last week which releases today so i highly recommend it this is just part of me wanting int to play a heavier 12 part 12 minutes ago actually 12 yeah. minutes ago. Fantastic was that the Sladpole? Was that the Sladpole episode? It yes, is indeed the Sladpole well episode. I did not name it Sladpole. I actually didn't <laughs> oh. reference the Sladpole in the description. Uh, because oh. I forgot. I can still edit it, though. Sorry, Dan, you're dead to me now. Oh, Damn. No, no. <laughs> oh well, so, sorry. I was, I was so proud of that joke, Dan. It's a, I mean, it's still in the episode. I know. <laughs> I will put, we'll put a special bonus for coins if people can find out what we were talking about. That'll be one sure. of the conquests. But that way I can still use it as my stage name when I dance at the uh, Spearmint Rhino. Oh, um, oh yeah. <laughs> Glad we so, still are allowing that career opportunity for you, yes. Right? <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's, that's basically just what I wanted to to pick a bone with. Um, yeah. I'll let someone else take the spotlight for their next uh, pet spell they want to talk about, Dan. Well, it's, it, it is an interesting, like, I... It is interesting that they do that with with the spells in D&D in, &D in general, because I think they, they kept it the same 
in terms of how they went from intelligence check to wisdom saving throw in the next one. That is, I think, still consistent with 2014. But it is interesting that they did it to begin with, period. And I think that's a really important point to bring up, Brendan. So thank you. Because that is uh, how we could say whack. Mm -hmm. Whack as fuck. Um, I say that. What the fuck are you talking about, Dan? <laughs> well, you have kids, so you you would. You would yeah, know but they're the kids dead. Say. You would. Yeah, you but would. they're dead. You would know what the kids say. What? You're you're you don't. Oh, hey, as, as a ten year old, I knew all the terrible cringe. Oh yeah, fair enough. Back yeah. in the day, uh, <laughs> Wait, I wasn't Dan, applying any of it correctly. Old. No, when I was ten. Twenty yeah, years I, ago. Oh, what the I, bitch? I, uh, I know. <laughs> I was like, Dan, I never knew you were ten years old. I thought. Hey, <laughs> you just came into Dan the just world manifested as a fully Seriously. grown adult. Like, well, to be fair, I did have gray hair in the beginnings of facial hair as a ten year old. So yeah. It do be like that. You, okay. you make it rock, Dan. You, you make it rock, Dan. Don't worry. Dang. Uh, yeah. Speaking of uh, putting more people on the spot, DJ, uh, which spells or which spells in particular would you like to begin with before we loop around um, to, to Greg and then race again? So I'll talk about enhance ability because I think they took the fun part out of enhance ability. Yeah, and what um, was the fun part? The fun part was all the, the extra auxiliary stuff that you get. Now, granted, I did re-look up Enhance Ability, the 2014 version, mm -hmm. and they only had, like, the, like, the, the, what I'm talking about is Enhance Ability, the spell, is you touch a creature and choose Strength, Dex, Int, Wiz, or Charisma. For the duration, the target has advantage on the ability checks using that chosen ability. That is the 24, that is the 2024 version. Yep, that's the, the new one. Yeah, the 2014 version uh, had extra like stuff if you chose con, strength, or dex. Uh, for con, you would gain an addition to the advantage on uh, con checks, which, by the way, there are no con checks in the game. Uh, Bear's Endurance is for con checks, gives you the extra 2d6 temp HP, which are lost when the spell ends. Uh, bull Strength doubles your carrying capacity. And Cat's Grace makes it so that you don't take damage from falling 20 feet or less unless you're incapacitated. Yep. Uh, personally, I thought that those were really interesting. Uh, I don't know why they took them out. My only thought process was they couldn't think of things to add for the other abilities, so they just got rid of the three other ones. Took away the cute names too. They they took away the cute names too, and it's like like uh, that adds just like flavor to it. Where it's like oh, okay, I'm gonna give my barbarian advantage on strength checks. He has or he has or he has the bowl strength. So what does this look mm -hmm. like? As like a a celestial bowl apparates around him, or like what is it that happens? You know, and and it's just it's more of the grayscale. It's more of the gray washing. I don't know why I said grayscaling. It's more of the gray washing. Well, that that's a word that exists before the podcast. Sure, it is, sure. Yeah. It is. I um, think. I think mainly the big thing is I think they were trying to do away with things that were holdovers from earlier editions because, um, from my recollection, all of these, you know, all of the individual bears, endurance, bull strength, cat's grace, eagle splendor, fox's cunning, owl's wisdom were considered sort of almost like individual spells in earlier editions. You could use to gain. Not advantage, but bonuses to strength back in the Fun day. Fact, I, I were... Go ahead, Greg. For please. someone that played all those editions, yeah, so all those were, in fact, individual spells uh, yeah. that would enhance attributes or ability scores. So, like, bull strength would give you yeah. plus four. Bull strength being one of the most famous of them. Strength. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, it was yeah. like an essential spell because you're any of your spellcasters who had access to it would be like, here you go, fighter. And then they would send them into the, you know, aura cleric to buff themselves sure. and become. A better fighter than a fighter anyway so yeah that, that's just a little little bit of tidbit history here thank yeah. you so you'd have individual spell scrolls or potions that replicated those spells effects as well so i think they they were doing that thing where i i know we're going to talk about just the simplification of just toning it down being like yeah just choose a stat now no other kicker attached to it which is sad just because i agree dj this was the cool part and they could have they could have made cool things for the mental skills as well mental yeah abilities. like i mean i shit i i am genuinely like during this time i've been trying to think of what they could do for the mental skills mm -hmm. i personally couldn't really think of anything i don't know if you guys have any thoughts well they are it's already advantage on a relevant check in that particular case Exactly. So it might have to be it, the hard part is either finding something that's not necessarily being borrowed too much from something else that is pretty common for that type of thing. Uh, 
Charisma, it's hard. Maybe charisma is better prices at, you know, vendors, maybe. Yeah. You know, something like that. Or like, like while you have or better memorization. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I'll, I'll, no, it's okay. I was gonna say for like, if you have Eagle Splendor, it's like every new person that you interact with who doesn't like know you is inherently because uh, they had it in this in this in this game now where they've actually cauterized hostile, indifferent, and uh, I forgot what the positive friendly. one is. Friendly. Yeah. So it's like when you have Eagle Splendor, whenever you meet someone new, they are automatically friendly to you because you have this this sort of splendor on you. That could be cool. That could be interesting. Uh, for for intelligence, I just thought of it right now. Intelligence, um, you can make a study action as a bonus action. That could be cool. Yeah, it might. Yeah, um... Any number of those. Anything. No, honestly, anything would have been more interesting than what they did, which is just call it. Because whether whether they could, I I, I don't imagine. I can't imagine you have that level of, of resources and availability of, of designers, and somebody couldn't think of something. So so the active design decision was to just nix it right oh it just gives you advantage on ability checks of this and move on and that that's great you know and people will use it for that in particular but it's also it is it's boring you know they didn't is, know the right chat a... gpt prompt that's why <laughs> yikes um but but yeah it does it does it simplifies the spell in a in another in another bad way i think where sure it's easier to use but the, i don't think it was unwieldy before you know, like, oh, it gives you this and an extra feature, and it, it's like, like you can have a billion concentration spells, and you're not using it in combat. So out of combat, it's a lot easier to kind of digest and organize your active buffs or spells that you're using. So, I don't know, removing that did kind of make it like, ah, eh, sure, I have advantage on this roll, but there's already so many ways to get advantage exactly. that it almost feels like kind of a waste of a spell. Uh, yeah, the kickers you know, were the interesting part. Guidance. Yeah, the kickers were like, hey, this this gives you this Plus a little extra boost, and yeah. I really, I really liked that part of enhance ability. I'm kind of sad that's gone. Also, there's no such thing as a. Uh, I know I already said it, but there's no such thing as a uh, Constitution check, which is just like, can anybody here think of one time when they have seen uh, in the rules a a rule call for a Constitution check, not a Constitution save? Brendan. Not in not oh. in the rules. However, in my games, I actually do it. Uh, if someone wants to yell to get someone's attention or like make themselves known across a distance or whatever, if they're just trying to be loud, I make a I make them make a con check for that. I love that. I love that. I love that, Brendan. And and another idea for a con check that I had was like an endurance roll. Where like like if you're if you're like having to just physically exert yourself like not even like strength but like you just have to push your bodies physically past its limits. staying power yeah stay exactly. stamina. staying power. Yeah, I, I I use it for whenever my yeah. characters my players eat really spicy food. A con check. I do a uh, um I do a if you you can resist becoming unconscious at zero hit points by making a constitution check. That's so cool. So you, you can stay up and continue to fight, but you, you still take death saves, but you're active. So it gives you a reason to kind of focus on constitution and like have that and be like, oh shit, I can not go yeah. down. So stuff like that. I'm Just stealing good. all of I'm, these ideas. I'm stealing that way. one. <laughs> yeah. Like hardcore. Would, that yeah, that one's really fun. Still, are hit so, still uh, failed death saves though, Greg? Yeah, yeah. So if you get oh, okay. you're, when you're below, everything acts the same. You're just not unconscious. So Ooh. it's a fun way to give a character like a last stand moment. Um, yeah. So I, I've actually this is in games I design. I always have a last stand mechanic where um, you get an ability that usually means that like once you hit zero HP, it like triggers. You can trigger it, and you're you don't die while the ability is active. But if you pass the threshold of death when the ability ends, you you immediately die. Um, so it gives you that hold the door kind of moment, you know, the uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to persevere and give everybody else a chance to, to like live and use those cool like narrative moments. Yeah, so. that's that's the awesome version of for players, it's just like almost the exact opposite of what I give like an avatar of death, the ability to make players fail death saving rolls before they go unconscious. So they just die immediately if they actually go unconscious later mm -hmm. on in the game. Damn, Which... that's scary. <laughs> that, that is a good point, and that and that's a fun thing that we can throw back into the spell that we're talking about. Is that you're oh, right? Yeah. Like, why would I ever use enhance ability on a con thing? I wouldn't because the game doesn't really call for them. So unless your DM well, has their own 
you know, additional content that they put in there or how they run things, then yeah, it's like, it's kind of a waste of a spell, but that, that goes hand in hand with the simplification of everything. The less mechanics and the less you have in your core system, the less your features and spells can do because they don't have anything to interact with. So, yeah. you know, the enhanceability becomes way more interesting when you know, like when you're playing with me, you're like, oh shit, I know I can resist going down. So I'm going to hit enhanceability on you. So when you take that last bit of damage, you can succeed that con save and suddenly you're up still fighting, even though you're probably going to die. But, you know, it gives you that extra capability. Uh, I'm curious, Greg, with that last stand rule, because th that has really piqued my interest. Uh, is it a flat DC, or does it scale based on the last instance of damage they take? Uh, so it's usually half the damage you took uh, to reduce you below zero, uh, is how I typically do it. Uh, and, and that might depend on different things. That's like the standard rule, because, you know, if you take 100 damage, you're not going to stay up. And on, on a nat 20, I'll let you stay up, because I'll let you crit it. Um, but, you know, if you take... 30 damage and you have a high con there's a chance that you can push through that so like your barbarian your fighter uh, are probably going to be the ones using that role yeah, it's funny that we brought up how you know constitution doesn't really have an ability check and they acknowledge that for 2024's enhance ability because that's not one of the abilities you can choose to gain advantage on it's just strength Dex, oh intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. God. It's not even in there. They just decided they were like, "Yeah, let's not have that be one of the ones you can actually That's... get." Okay, you can't enhance it. Pathfinder now, right? So it was very <laughs> deliberate. It was a very deliberate choice to yeah. mix things essentially and scale it down. It wasn't that they just took it out because they were lazy. They it was an it was a clearly a very intentional Intent, choice. Yeah. All I'm saying to... is this is a public request for Paizo. Hit us up. <laughs> well, well I'll, I'll make Dan talk. There are. Yeah, there's a. Uh, yeah, there's, there's, yeah, there's, there's so many hands that gotta change for a decision like that to be made. There's <laughs> so many things for that. Also, you know, yeah, one not, sec, guys. Not I'll free get of its own drama, by the way. That's I'll get Jason Bowman on the line. I just, yeah. you know, I have his personal number. I'll just talk him up and be like, "Hey, can we? Uh, can you just like design hey, for us?" Hey, J Dog, how you doing? <laughs> oh goodness! All right. Uh, with that, Greg. What's uh, what's the first spell you'd like to talk about today? You know, I, I had to find something I wanted to talk about because I'm I'm I kind of I've moved on to the DMG at this point. I'm a I little bit over have. the players got I've tra have. I've trash talked it enough, but there there are a few spells that I think are worth a mention. Not that these spells we haven't talked about aren't worth a mention. These guys are just For way sure. more into it than I am right now. And the conjure the new conjure spells yeah are, are worth taking a look at because this is a great example of both a, a good and a negative change in my opinion of mm -hmm. making something more interesting and usable mm -hmm. in that aspect, but also kind of like diminishing certain build potentials, right? So to give everyone an example, Conjure Minor Elementals, I know the spell has had a lot of conversation around it in the, the meta sphere, uh, but oh, yeah. those of you unaware, the way that this spell reads is you conjure spirits from the elemental planes that flit around you in a 15 foot emanation for the duration. Until the spell ends, any attack you make deals 2d, I'm sorry, add an extra 2d8 damage when you hit a creature in the emanation. This damage is acid, cold, fire, or lightning, your choice when you make the attack. In addition, the ground in the emanation is difficult terrain for your enemies. So this is a level 4 spell, which rightfully so. It's a concentration. It lasts up to 10 minutes. I, I don't know why it's 10 minutes, because you're probably just going to use it for like 1, though you'll probably, you can cast it ahead of time, I guess save the action economy if you're going into a fight right. um and what makes this what makes this spell interesting is it gets rid of the i'm summoning a bunch of small elementals and controlling that so it removes yes. the the zoom answer build or you just I summon a bunch of the things lord of methods yes exactly. yeah right <laughs> i them summoning yeah so it gets rid of that build and that entire concept of a character and instead replaces it with a a damage enhancement spell which is is it's like I'm not sure how I feel about that because I like the idea of taking the spell, making it more manageable, and giving it a, a mechanical impact that doesn't necessarily match the narrative design of the spell, right? So like the narrative of the spell is I'm summoning a bunch of minor elementals. Now, typically, feasibly, I would think mechanically, I would have access to a bunch of small stat blocks. But what this spell is saying is that, hey, because these minor elementals are running around you and doing things, you do additional damage when you smack something because it's representing the elementals jumping on them and smacking them or they're just their esoteric fire burning things. 
I actually, I like that. I like the differences because that makes the spell more manageable. It's probably something you're going to use more often. It fits like, it also gives like a druid, for instance, a more melee approach um, that, that they might not have like felt comfortable doing before because their damage was so low with only a single attack. So that's interesting. And and I like that aspect of it. Now, this da- the, the spell itself is probably a little problematic um, damage-wise because it does give you a huge boost of extra melee damage. So 2d8 additional on every single strike that you make, that's that's a big deal. Um, in addition to that, the upcast as well. In addition to the upcasting at right. So you can you can go to town. Actually, with this, with this particular spell, I have a build for a level 7 druid that does something like um, 66 plus 78 damage every time it smacks something. Um, and then I have another way to make it do even more at higher levels. So, you know, you, you end up getting like pretty high damage spells, but honestly, we've talked about Sorcerer's Burst, so I don't think that's <laughs> anymore. Um, so, so it, it's, it's, again, it, it's a great change. I think overall, it's a really good in a, a, an aspect of design. I hate that they took away the Zoomancer. Because yeah, some players that gets overwhelming, but for other players like me, for instance, I for me, I can probably take five turns in less time than the average player can take in one in, in one turn, right? Because I I'm DMing and what I'll do as a DM is I'll send twenty monsters at you at once and I'll get that turn those turns done very quickly. Like a couple seconds will go by and I'm like, oh, miss, 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 hit, hit, hit. Uh, here's a bit of narration, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I, I'm proficient in that. So I can play a zoom answer and it's not going to bog down the group. Um, and I'll be narrating. I'll be talking about it the entire time. Now I know a couple of players that if they have one additional stat block, everyone groans and they tear their eyes out because it takes them an hour to go through a turn. Yeah. And sure. But that that's, that's dealt with at your table. It shouldn't be dealt with in the system. You know, it's, it's not something 100%. where, yeah, your table should be like, yo dude, no. <laughs> like we're either going to help you or you're not going to play like summon all these creatures. We're going to remove that. Um, but you shouldn't remove the capability of, of something, a build, especially, especially because that commercial, I keep coming back to where you can play whatever you want. Right. Dan, we were talking bullshit. about, um, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> like there's exactly it's bullshit. Cause I can't play. Uh, I can represent that summoning capability, but I can't actually play that. And that's really frustrating because maybe I Not want, yeah. yeah, maybe I want to summon my five elementals and have them do multiple things as opposed to just like the one summon spell, which just gives me like one dude who's like, bro, I'm, yeah. I'm here. So, yeah, What's up, bro? Are you cold? As, as somebody who just played in a game where somebody used the 2024 conjure, you know, normal elemental, they didn't realize until after they had cast the spell that the elemental in the new conjure elemental doesn't move. It just stays there as a choke point killer, essentially. Are or, you talking you about know, the summon elemental? No, the actual conjure. The conjure elemental. You know, people people were excited. They were like, hey, you know, it conjures oh. a single big elemental and it just stays there as a guardian of sorts. Uh, people, some people really were like, hey, I used to be able to conjure or, you know, have a big boy come out and then now instead, yeah, you have to use the summon ability which is I yeah think, that's summon elemental yeah yeah the summon one is not as good well it's pretty much the same i think they all they all scale off of whatever your spell level is right i think it's the big yeah elemental spirit yeah yeah it's... yeah the elemental spirit where they give you a stat block and that's what you summon instead of getting the actual just here is my elemental stat block or yeah yeah and then is... you don't get to choose like you know i actually i i personally didn't do this but I saw a, I was watching an actual play where a uh, wizard summons a bunch of uh, dust methods, and their only goal is to just take there, is to stand there and like soak up damage. And when they die, they explode and cover the enemies. My allergies and... would go nuts. Exactly. <laughs> and they placed their dust methods in such a way so that when one exploded, it caused a chain reaction that blew up all of them. And all of the enemies in that area got blinded. Well, in fact, we call that Chunky Salsa. Chunky Salsa. <laughs> See, they have a name for it. And that's really cool. But you can't have Chunky Salsa anymore in 2024. So, fun fact, it's, Chunky it's Salsa true. is usually um, in a lot of games with exploding dice and grenades in small um, <clears throat> areas where you have multiple enemies and then the damage cascades on top of it. That's actually something that you could do 
uh, that we used to do when we played uh, Star Wars D6 uh, Wedge West End Games D6 Star Wars. Oh where... wow! Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that that's a right. That's a throwback. That's a where throwback, Greg. You, yeah, where you had exploding dice, so it was all a d6 system, and you had your force dice, quote unquote. And if it rolled a six, you would just keep rolling it until it didn't roll a six. And we had it was like a small room. It was like maybe twenty feet by twenty feet, and it was loaded with stormtroopers. And someone was like, "Oh, I've got a grenade," and they just tossed it in there. And then, and, and this is a game where most creatures have twenty to thirty hit points, where you have a maximum of fifty hit points usually. Um, so like average enemies might have five or 10 and they threw that grenade and they just, they rolled a six and they're like, cool. And they rolled a six and they're like, cool. And they rolled a six 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 and they end up doing 120 points of damage, uh, inside this uh, little tiny container and it created chunky salsa. Uh, so that's kind of the, the general <laughs> terminology of that. Anyway, also, sorry, going shout out to all my orc players. Yeah. Sustained hits. Now we don't call it explosive anymore. Rest in peace. Jeez, wow, work. That's it. Anyway, yeah. So uh, going back to what we we're talking about uh, with that sort of, I don't even remember what we were talking about. Sorry, DJ, finish your point. I just got uh, off. On a I, uh, I all I said was that you can't do fun dust method exploding explosion. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Right. You so you can't chunky salsa. <laughs> you can't do chunky salsa, and that's unfortunate because that that's such a circumstantial thing that comes from the rule that comes out of the rules rather than being in the rules and limiting your ability to like create those moments that's really unfortunate that that cascading exploding dust map thing is awesome i love that yeah. it, it, it's fundamental they want it to be a you know they want hasbro wants D D to be a uniform experience like you're playing a video game they don't want it to be something where you could have something like that because they want it to be standardized you know what's funny is it actually strikes me more as a board game like yeah. an actual board game, talking like one E D and D, you know, where you had like, you know, you'd roll and you'd get into the room and then you'd you'd move on to like the next room and it's it's very very board gamey. I'm calling it that sixth to... edition. You just choose from pre pre generated characters. There's no character creation in sixth. <laughs> and edition. you know, it might even that that is a good point too because this might influence their design might have been influenced by their virtual tabletop where they wanted to be able to have everything seamlessly transition into basically their like video game style tabletop. Um, yeah. If it's like 3D images, that that might play. And we haven't it. seen Maybe. anything from that in a while. That's they've been keeping yeah. that they've, under wraps. They've taken away announcements. That's still in the Skunk Works the virtual, so. the virtual tabletop from now for now. So, but yeah, that that is in in like a kind of ominous uh, theory, Greg. It's, <laughs> it wouldn't yeah. surprise me because it it is a it is a valid like way to because when you look at say Baldur's Gate three right and how much they couldn't include because adapting an entire rules heavy. Um, TTRPG into a video game is a lot yeah. of work. That's also uh, why they the stopped at a certain level. <laughs> you know, they're yeah, like, so they're just like, we're done. I think the only like, people oh, to really do it super successfully is uh, Owlcat Studios, who does the Pathfinder so 1E games, where they have very successfully transitioned basically all of Pathfinder 1E, except for like the hard extended stuff, into a video game that are massive, mm -hmm. and they give you all those options. Uh, and there's there's still bugs, even even years and years after the game's released, because there's so much interaction that it's hard to program into a game. So I, I don't know, that that is, again, the one of my ominous predictions, which I hope to be wrong about. I will also but say it wouldn't surprise me. I also realized something that happened a little bit differently. That table I was at the other night where they somebody cast conjure full elemental, like the regular elemental. Mm -hmm. You're not actually summoning an actual elemental, which is how they played it in the game. You can summon a spirit that takes on one of the four categories and then it just grabs somebody every time they walk past it. There is no actual elemental summoning anymore. And also in terms of summon elemental spirit you lose all the cool stuff about the actual elementals, like the fact that, like, the fire elemental, like, does ongoing damage if you touch it. Like, the air element, like, there's, you, water elementals take more damage from cold. Interesting stuff. There's still, like, a burrow speed for an earth elemental spirit, but there's not, like, a glide through stone kind of thing. So it's, we've talked about burrow speeds before, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. But still, you do lose, you do, you lose the um, unique aspect the interesting of the stuff. Watching. It's the yeah, you watching, lose the cool yeah. stuff. And mm -hmm. can we talk to you for a second about forced saving throw so conjure elemental the level five spell um just this passage whenever a creature you see enter the spirit space or starts its turn within five feet of the spirit you can force that creature to make a dexterity saving throw the problem i have with out of this is you can force that creature to make a dex saving throw why can't i make a spell attack instead of forcing them to make a dex save i would much rather prefer 
to be actively involved in my spells than have the DM roll the dice apart from me. And this is something that really bothers me and that they, they put so much extra work on the DM by having you roll a save for everything, for every creature. And, and that, that's really, it's really frustrating because you can even adapt that to the player, right? You can have the player basically always roll where they make the, when it's an enemy walking into their spell, they make a spell attack or whatever against whatever defense. And then, but when it's a player walking into it, then you can have them make a deck save. And that's something that I feel like is, is another huge missed opportunity here because it keeps the player rolling dice. It puts extra work off the DM where you have to like check the stat block or pull it up on your VDT and roll the dice and keep it hidden or, you know, what, however you do it versus the player just being actively engaged with all of their mechanics. Uh, and a, I will say rant. this, I feel like as a player, it hurts less to miss with an attack than for an enemy to save on a saving throw. Agree. Right. Agree. And, and it also comes down to that mm. thing of like, yeah, I'm going to use my Conjure Elemental and I'm going to make this person do a dexterity saving throw. Oh, they also have magic resistance, so they actually get advantage on this saving throw. Mm. It's much easier to to well first off it gives you agency as a player right because you're yeah. rolling dice what are we here to do we're here to roll dice let me roll my dice let me do it that's the one thing i get to do you get to actively participate more in the game and yeah and when you miss it's your fault it's not your dm's fault you rolled low like you did that it's also easier to buff your attack than to debuff an enemy's defense yeah especially mm -hmm. in fifth edition so yeah, you can do bad. things to set up and it makes you more tactical even because you're going to put yourself in a position to because if you know they're making a save or just be like whatever i'm just going to do it and they're going to make the save and they're going to pass or not but if you're like oh i'm in charge of this i need to make my attack so maybe i'll buff myself maybe i'll give myself an advantageous position maybe i'll put this and, and try to manipulate the environment to give myself advantage blah 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 when things are in your hands you spend more time trying to develop them or play with them or actively engage with the world around you so that this is this is a small it's funny how much you can get from a single passage of a single spell uh that has that has nothing to do with what we were generally talking about with the medium <laughs> of these but uh yeah that, that's another it's a huge missed opportunity i think but i i've i've ranted enough about conjure spells i think we have the general no gist worry. of it dan i definitely agree with you and that not like that not conjuring like an actual elemental you can like move and do stuff with is, is a little like, kind of like... It's a bit disappointing, but I mean, it applies to all of the Contra spells in, in their ways. I mean, cool things. They are cool things. They could have been something other than named as a Contra spell and probably wouldn't have, you know, tweaked so many brains in the way that they did. But, you know, it, it is what it is, I think, at this point. We'll see if there's any updates or expanded errata as we move through, you know, future releases of things. Fingers crossed, you know, perhaps in vain, but the fingers are crossed. <laughs> Uh, before I talk about like the little the little spells that are like scattered throughout that I'm like oh yeah this one went from a d6 to a d8 or something like that uh, race why don't you talk to us about Bigby's hand yeah it's no longer the strength or dexterity modifier it's just your ability it's um your spellcasting ability modifier yeah that's so, good yeah so instead of the hand having what was it like a plus eight strength bonus that it would use during grappling or pushing now it's just your it's now a oh, saving yeah. throw for them or something like that. Or Yeah, you know, it no more, longer has strength. Or spell DC. Yeah, it's yeah just so the spell. hand is I'm just like, yeah, hand. That's good. It's good. Uh, quick cue. Yes. Uh, did the 2014 version also have the interposing hand feature granting you half cover against attacks? It did. Yeah. It was Ooh. also like people couldn't move through the hand space. It was also, it specifically, it specifically was like, hey, the hand grants you half cover as it interposes itself between you and a particular creature until you give the hand another command. Okay, yeah. So, so yeah. yeah, it no longer continues to interpose itself after you know, you've issued that command. It can only just cover you from attacks made from that space. So, you, know. you know, here's a fun fact this spell literally does what we were just talking about, where it allows you to make a spell attack to mm -hmm. punch someone with yeah. your hand. <laughs> like, um, yeah. I do have a quick thing as well. Um, like, so I, I, I'm sorry, I'm gonna it's take two quick show. things. Yeah, um, dare you? They explicitly say grease is no longer fi flammable. Um, that's yes. got beef that's... with that, and uh, also, why does fireball not go around corners? That's 
Uh, fire, fireball no longer goes around corners. Okay, but can we talk about that grease thing for a second? Because that really that's it, really dumb. It pisses me <laughs> off. Do you guys know hey, how chemistry hey. works? Hey guys, no, 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 no. They said it. It's in the it's in the rules book. It's a non flammable grease. Exactly. It's just like guys. Grease. Just Everyone... at that point, just just like call not even, I was gonna say call it like an oil slick and call just it. Just call it, it I mean, yeah. Just oh. honestly, dude, have it just be a giant banana peel. <laughs> I would rather a spectral banana peel. I would absolutely rather a spectral banana peel. I mean, they could have just been like, hey, aura of slipperiness or something rather than like whatever. Aura of slipperiness just, is actually the club that I'm I I'm just did. ignoring that because greasing something, having it fall prone, and then setting it on fire is one of it's the few hilarious. joys of a first level wizard. Like it's, it's so just it's funny. a cl- it's a classic, like, com- or, you know, you grease it, they fall on the ground, and your fighter goes, hey, and they throw a torch at him. You know, like, yeah. it's it's just like, ah, why would you do that? Why would you take that away? What's the problem with grease doing an extra D4 of damage in the spell ending? You, you, know, you know, what's so <laughs> dumb, too, is that he didn't change the material component, which was always a bit of pork rind or butter, which are, you know, like, if you're flammable. greasing stuff with that, it's gonna be flammable. Yeah. He's, he's specifically in cooking to increase the heat <laughs> of the pan. What do you mean it's not flammable? <laughs> like, that's bullshit. That's just it's dumb. Just, that's really, really frustrating. High smo- it's really high smoke point. And what's what the conversation is. that happened around this? But You know, were they just sitting around and like, People guys, you know what's really fun. OP? You know what's really <laughs> crazy strong? You know what we need to fix? Or or <laughs> was it was it someone who was like, God, these fucking players, they greased my enemy and they set him on fire and I mean, ah, wasn't it, I'll I get think it them. was a Jeremy Crawford tweet. <laughs> I think it was a Jeremy Crawford tweet that somebody was like, Hey, like, no, no, Jeremy Crawford, don't sue me if this is wrong. Um somebody was like, Hey, is grease flammable? And I think he said maybe. I think it I think it started turning up in one of those like Arana, what were they called? Like sage advice or something where they were like, Yeah, grease isn't flammable, by the way, guys. But then That's dumb. He, says what says they who? still kept it in Baldur's Gate. Like Baldur's Gate three was like, Grease is flammable. Baldur's yeah, Gate yeah, was like, yeah, Grease is flammable for sure. Because host, you're not my dad. I'm gonna say it's flammable still. <laughs> well, Larian understands fun. So they were like, Of course they it's really gonna be do. flammable. They were so. like, Yeah, this is <laughs> like, they're Larian, like, it's so many ways. Yeah, not only is it. grease flammable, but you could light it on fire, then cast water and have ice. Yeah, or out of, it, or but out that's of, that's steam, the kind of stuff I want. You know, I want to. No, that that's when you have your uh, when you have a slickened or an ice surface and you set it on fire, it becomes ice and you electrify it, and then you hit them with a lightning spell. Anyway, yeah. um, there there's a lot of ways to do a lot of damage. Order of operation, yeah. and they're amazing. Anyway, so but but that's uh, that's the replay. kind of stuff I want to pull off in. In my TCRPG, also, like I, I have so many fond memories of throwing, of you know, grease and then having someone set on fire or web, you know, like you you grease, they hit the ground, then you cast a web on top of them. Now they're restrained while prone, and then and you set both the grease and the web on fire, and it's, it's just like, you're like Whoa. that's the only reason people use grease is to set it on fire. It's check off yeah. grease. Prone is great, and I'm going to be totally honest with you, in Temple of Elemental Evil, it's one of the only ways to yes. take out that freaking ogre early in the game is to grease it and hope it falls over and you can kill it before it murders you. So, you know, it's it's like, it's one of those situations where it's a, gr- it's a great spell, but the, the fire edition is just, it, it's part of the spell, man. And and we have so few spell combos in 5th edition, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it's very rare for someone to cast a spell and then for another person to be able to, like, combo on top of it. And that is one, and it's classic, and Fuck you for, for trying to it's, change it. It's they don't want the flavor. They don't for, want flavor. It's bland. Sorry, DJ, you're holding is, your hand yeah, up like you want. I was to... I was gonna say for anyone who is curious, uh, the webs on the web spell are still flammable. Ooh. Okay, but like, why have those but, still be flammable and not grease? It's a grease second, specifically because it's a second level spell. So oh, now yeah. second level spells are able so, to deal damage. Second level yeah. spells can have the additional D four of fire and not the first oh, level spell. I, uh, um, actually, it's two D four. Oh, two D four damage. Two D four. Actually, here's my question. Here's my question. Does uh... six damage? <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> would uh, would you as DMs rule that there is an interaction or at least like advantage if somebody were to have spider climb cast on themselves before they entered a grease area? I would treat grease that negate as... spider climb. Just no, fuck that. 
he, Grief I, I, totally I, I, negates spider climb. Yeah, I, I would treat that as just like an entire barrier between the whatever you're like between you and the surface you're adhering to. It's I like putting the well. spider in in the roller skates in the cartoon. Okay, that's that's yeah, the that's effect of Grease. Is, but... I'm gonna to answer your question, Dan. I'm gonna have them make a roll. If you have that, that's what the spell makes the roll possible. If if fair. if they if they didn't, then because that's that's when I right. It's there's a chance for failure. There's so, but it could be more. crazy cool. It could and be, then, yeah, absolutely. Maybe that spider Greg took years of inline skating lessons. Yeah, <laughs> <Hell> yeah. <laughs> they just, they, I love dig black, it. they love, they love black lights and they love birthday <laughs> parties. So they just spent Those two every weekend go at the rink. <laughs> they just spent every weekend at the rink. Below a certain age, like, they're I've fine. trained for this <laughs> yeah. moment. I've trained yeah. for this moment. I I'm did. down with that. That's yeah, I'm I totally chill with that. That's like my You're bringing back a lot of a lot of pizza bit. party memories right now, Brendan. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh god. Yeah. I always had my parties at Chuck E. Cheese. I just I hate okay. the the inability <laughs> to yikes. I, I just that the, they the, they they took away those aspects, right? Like why oh, why remove something that's so minor and that doesn't really affect the game? You know, yeah. it really it really doesn't. It just makes it more fun, I suppose. Someone can get mad that like someone lights their grease on fire and then the spell's over, but who? It's a first level grease spell. Like you're gonna okay, cool. Cast another first level spell. Yeah, cast right another about it. spell. Like you're all right. <laughs> it kind of feels like somebody was like, "Hey, somebody could do something weird with this. Let's just take out that ability so no one could do anything weird." That makes it even weirder, actually. Let, that means let me do us, weird yeah. though. I want to do my weird thing. I want to have my brilliant okay, moment. Where I used to, you know, I, I was in a campaign once and uh, I might have told the story before, but the whole thing is we had to find this item, this MacGuffin, it was broken. And because it was broken, everything was going crazy. And we were running from this dragon. I'm like, wait, and we're level one. I was like, wait a minute, I cast Mending on it. And the DM looked at me and went, fuck. Uh uh, and it fixed the whole thing. And he was like, all right, I guess that's that's like the thing. And, you know, later we looked it up and it was magical and I wouldn't be able to mend it. But but that, that was still like a weird moment that was hilarious. And like that, that the, just, you know, we turned it into something else, but it was just really funny, you know, and, and like that kind of stuff cropping up is like part of the game, you know, and when you actively add little tiny caveats that seem like they're innocuous, you know, they don't really matter but they change pretty much how, how the game flows and, and kind of how it instructs you to play the game. Cause like that saying that's non flammable is kind of telling you to not let your players do that. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whereas before it was like, <laughs> you can set that grease on fire. <laughs> you know, it's also, kind of like a kid fucking around. Just the phrase non flammable grease is just ridiculous. Yeah, that hurts it's, my head a little bit. Like, like, it's gross. It, like it, it's one of those things where it's called where... lube. Just call, just call the spell yeah, lube. Right? If that's right? what you want, right? I cast well, liquid. Much... Sponsor me. I, 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 I cast puddle. Lube. I cast uh, puddle. Right? Glide, deploy. I know. You're all just using lube names, aren't you? Okay. Uh, um, <laughs> great, gross. <laughs> Yeah, we're so uh, so I, think, lube, I think we're done with the new yeah, Crisco spell. Yeah, yeah. Uh, ending off on lube. What's the new? What's the new? What's, what are we doing next, guys? Yeah, we should about a different it? spell. Whose turn is I, I, it's technically Brendan's turn next, but I will, uh, since I didn't really do anything for mine, and I, I, there is one thing I would like to point out. Um, which is a little bit, it's a little bit of inside D&D. For anyone who is not aware or who has heard us talk about it before, um, yes, they do include, like, the expanded list of possible poisons in the new DMG, the new Dungeon Master's Guide, Ooh. as they did before. And they also did technically kind of bring back diseases, but they have now named them Magical Contagions, uh, which that. is funny. That's I funny. also hate it because... They specifically have the contagion spell in the new 2024 book well, that says your touch inflicts a magical contagion, but it just revolves around the poison condition, taking necrotic damage, and so on and so forth. Whereas the old contagion spell listed possible diseases you could get. Now here's the thing. The, the magical contagions kind of are the exact same diseases from the old disease category. However... They decided to print the contagion spell without referencing the magical contagions you can possibly get. But it, that I just, I personally, I find that very frustrating. It feels like there was a disconnect between the people who were designing 
the PHB and the DMG for 2024. I haven't taken oh. a look at the list of designers and the table of contents, but it's like it felt like a very easy thing to do. Because of that, it led us to believe because of how they cut out disease, the language, the term disease from its entire book, to think that there was they weren't going to do it anymore. Because they didn't they even use the terminology, magical contagion. Sorry, go ahead, Greg. I'm so, no, I'm sorry. There isn't there is a direct connection, and it's called the marketing department. Oh mm-hmm. God. God, God, God. <laughs> like, the, you can. the most burning insult I've heard you say, and I've heard you say a lot of mean <laughs> things in my time, Greg. That might be the meanest thing I've ever heard you say. Because uh, how is that not? It's a direct. You can only get the magical contagions from the DMG, but there's a spell that directly references it. So I mean, that, that's that's not that's not even reading between the lines. That's reading the 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 large print, <laughs> like that's right in front of your face. Like there's no way that they didn't. Well, you know, if you want to get the contagions, you'll just have to buy the DMG. Ha ha ha. Jokes on you, uh, paywall. Yeah, they don't exactly. even say like, that's the thing is like they don't even say that it just says your touch inflicts a magical magical contagion not that they're like hey if you read another book you can actually get to choose a particular contagion like you could in 2014 yeah. and that's even it's more just... sinister because you have to go looking for it you have to be exactly. like you have to google magical contagion and what is that going to show up as 2024 dmg not even or out there, right? <laughs> or a, or 5e <clears throat> With a tool, uh, what's that? Five E and a tool, tools, a tools site that may or may not have access to multiple <laughs> features. You can look up at any point. I really love tools that involve Five E. Anyway, that was just a small little subtlety there. And, but no, so like th- that is like a direct thing, and that is really frustrating. I, and I, I hate that all diseases are now apparently magical. Yeah, magical contagions. That's exactly congratulations. You don't just have a regular flu; you have magical flu. <laughs> Yeah, you need to go find no adamantine robidust. <laughs> <laughs> there, is there no? Are there no just like standard diseases? That nope, not that not not like, like they're all. It's it's well, they're part of the same section as hertzes and magical contagions. Oh no! So they're now they are considered technically different because you. But they're like yeah, alchemists, potion brewers, and areas of wild magic created the first magical contagions. And it's just yeah, well, I mean, syphilis is definitely a curse, but like I don't, I've never really considered. Yeah. But it, it, the funniest thing is, it's it's like so. the same three basic like cackle fever, sewer plague, and sight yeah. run. It's like sewer plague is literal just cholera and dysentery, but apparently it's magical. <laughs> It's Ooh, magical, magical diarrhea. People. Thank you, Dan. It's, a, it's just a minor... Put that on my tombstone. Put that on my tombstone. Died of magical dysentery. <laughs> oh, God. That's such a weird, like, distinction, though, just to get rid of, like, basic diseases. Because you don't you don't necessarily need to stat them. You can have just a little thing where, like, normal diseases exist. You know, you can still get Sorry, cholera. Right. Congratulations. Whatever. You inflicted your enemy with mumps. <laughs> yeah. Like, and magical there's no mumps. way to... It's funny because like in D&D in these settings in Forgotten Realms, like a mundane doctor is like useless because there's no disease that isn't magical. Why would I go to school for four years when I can just ask a god to do it? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, and it's like you can't you can't do anything with medicine. Medicine is just to determine how something died or like, <clears throat> I don't know, I, I guess if you, if you want to identify parts of its body. So like doctors are useless. They're either, they're all clerics or well, bards with healing spells. Isn't medicine a wisdom skill? Yeah. Yeah, which has always been very strange. Um, I will. This is giving me inspiration to if I ever have like right now my home game. They're not in the sewer. They're not in like a disease filled place. But if we go to like the tropics or like I don't know, like some cesspool under some forgotten ruins or something, I am giving every single monster like if you make melee combat damage with them, especially or maybe like even like disadvantage on piercing or slashing weapons. If you break their skin and get their blood on you, it's oh, yeah. going to be disease city. And all of them Listen, are going to be a player magic. trench foot once every <laughs> that's, that's really good. Everything's going to have like a magic immunity, like spells above or spells below like fourth level. Don't cure this or something like that. Yeah, They even specify that they're like, yeah, with curses and magical contagions, like, the removed curse might work on like some things, but some things might persist beyond it. I'm like, it's basically how. Okay, everybody what are the things anyway? You know, what are the things though? Tell me the things. Yeah, <laughs> it's that, that's it's a rough. Sentence is which what that is. Yeah. I know. Well, we might get into it more when we do a little more of a DMG deep dive, which might be part of our origins. One we might split between origins and bastions uh, next episode, and then maybe do the rest of the DMG another time. Because I'll be honest, the magical items are pretty much the same with a few 
weeks yeah. here and there. Um, I like how with that language, Wizards of the Coast is like your non-committal high school boyfriend. You know, just like. <laughs> Yeah, I love you. I'm not going to say in front of everyone else. What was the, what was the quote from from the Barbie movie? Uh, Long term monogamous, uh, low energy, life girlfriend or, something, or like yeah, some, yeah, something like that. It was there were a lot of terms used. Yes. Yeah, so Anyways, I, I, whatever it was, it was sublime and very accurate to how Watsi is treating us right now. Oh, you God. know what? Long term, low Great. commitment girlfriend. Thank yeah. you. Long. Thank you for shout out to Mattel girlfriend. Hasbro's uh, Hasbro's. Oh rival. no! <laughs> <laughs> it all comes back. It all comes back to toy companies, guys. God. It's it's toy corporations the whole way down. Uh, one thing that I do like is that they actually made weird a spell that I want to take now. Uh, yeah. That spell, the ninth level spell in the 2014 book, was absolutely freaking miserable like there's no way even for a flavor reason you would want to take that spell ever but in the 2024 one they actually made it cool um let's expand on that yeah in a 30 foot radius sphere centered on a point within range makes a wisdom saving throw i don't love that because again it's just the same point that i made before an illusion spell i think should be an intelligence save Uh, on a failed save it takes 10 d10 psychic damage and has the frightened condition for the duration. Uh, on a successful save, the target takes half as much. Um, but then it's got a frightened target makes a wisdom saving throw at the end of each of its turns. On a failed save, it takes 5d10 psychic, so half what it initially did. And then if it saves, it just ends. So the spell starts off really, really cool. And then like a wisdom saving throw, like DJ was saying, like they could have advantage on magical saves or like Greg was saying, the thing might just be immune to frighten. Uh, it just kind of takes this like cliff dive mm-hmm. <laughs> at the back end of the spell. Um, but at least they made it. So it, it's, it's, it's a lot better like than the contender. old one. Yeah. yeah it's you a know, contender. Most, I think most spells and unfortunately have that effect where, they have like, oh, this cool long-term thing, except they get a save at the end of every single one of their turns, so it's probably going to wear off uh, pretty quickly. And so it, it's one of the things they've done that actually makes crowd control and debuffs kind of, most people ignore them. Because they're like, well, it's not going to last long enough to be really matter anyway. It might like take one turn away from them, but I don't really care because they're just going to save out of it. So it, it, it's I, I, dis- I dislike that personally, but you're right, with weird, that nosedive off the end of it, where it like starts really strong and you're like, oh, but... Blech. Blech. Yeah. yeah. Even that it's... nosedive is stronger than the old one because it also knows yeah. the other old one nosedive as well. But at least you get yeah. initial damage. Well, shout out to three point five, where old like old old weird used to just murder everything. Like mm-hmm. they would, you would cast it, and it was an AOE death spell. Oh, <laughs> like God. that's weird. yeah, straight up whale the banshee weird. Yeah, that that was that was a crazy Ooh. spell. Something oh, used that, God. and you clenched. <laughs> like that was it was Ooh. truly terror. I mean, somebody pulls out a banshee, <laughs> I still clench even in fifth edition. Um Good. Yeah, well so the old weird still still required two saving throws. So it was um you would have to roll will save and you failed that, then you roll fort save and if you if you failed that you would die. Um but that, but that was it though. Like and it was an AoE murder. And yeah. even if um the funny thing about the old spell is even if the subject succeeded its fortitude save, it would still take damage and be stunned for a round. So, um, so like, yeah, so you could still like, it was a, it was a ninth level spell. It was terrifying. So like, even if you got past its defenses, it still did something to you. Yeah. You were just like, (laughs) I'm going to take, I'm going to take a short, shorthand crack at like a design here. And I never, I never designed my own spells for games. Do it. But like right here, I'm going to, I'm going to put like a condition on this. Like you don't get to make the wisdom save unless your intelligence score like is at a certain threshold or like like make one save like a condition on the other or like you have i don't know that's interesting disadvantage Uh, let's say your intelligence score or the monsters or whoever's passing this your intelligence score is a 16 or above you can make the save at the end of your turn if it's 15 or lower you make the save a disadvantage like kind of you can keep it the wisdom save all right wizards you want to make wisdom saves and deck saves like the kings of the game fine but like i'm gonna tie this to like another score 
So I don't know if that would be good or bad, but just think something I would try. Definitely interesting. I, I think I think the, the the intent to shift the spell is is what is the good part here, right? Because everyone, I think every DM should eventually get a little bit into design work if you're going to bring 5e because it just makes, 5e needs it. It wants you to redesign it and to like make it stronger. Um, I, that's an interest, it, it's it's interesting. I don't know if it's good or bad. I'd have to really mess with it to say like, hey, you actually need a high enough ability to notice an illusion spell in order to roll against it. Otherwise it just like affects you, which that, that, that actually, that feels like a mechanic that should exist within the game. Um, and this is a little bit shout out to my own work. Uh, the game I'm currently designing has a mechanic like that where it's called, uh, where it's, it's a spell tag called suppressed, where if you don't notice the spell, so the suppressed has a certain DC to it and you can roll against that DC. And if you fail that, you don't understand that an illusion is an illusion or that something is magic. So like, for instance, something like weird, you fail that roll or you, you don't even get a chance to do it and it just works on you because your mind instantly believes it. That's a mechanic that I think should, that could, that's basically what you were talking about, right, Brennan, where it's like, hey, unless you can notice it, you won't notice it and then it just works on you. Yeah, like there are some spells, like it's the other way around, right? Like if you cast something and like, what is it? If their intelligence score is so low that it doesn't work, uh, I forget what they are off the top of my head, but I know they exist. Yeah, and it's basically like a a, 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 a sapient creature can't be affected by this because it's too dumb. Yeah. E exactly. Yeah, I feel like with or a ninth level creature. spell, like this should exist in that realm. Yeah, but... absolutely. It's the same level as wish. Yeah, you know, <laughs> like it's it's, it it's literally the same more, level. As yeah. Wish. It should do a lot more. Like it, it should. It, look, look at meteor swarm. Yeah, it's about ninth level spells not damage. being equal. Yeah, of meteor swarm versus like some psychic damage, that isn't isn't nearly on par with the same amount of impact and range mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. It's just like, why is the spell so limited? Yeah, it would be cool. Also, and this will be the last thing I say on it. Like, if you had. I don't know, take away the frightened condition. Cause we, we saw that spell earlier, right? That didn't say frightened, but it just spelled out disadvantage, yeah. right? What was that? The phantasmal killer that we were talking yeah, about earlier? Yeah, the killer, yeah. yeah. Could have done that, like, yeah. Yeah, but they don't say it here for some reason for a ninth level spell. Again, we're relying on that frightened, that like undead guaranteed not gonna work, constructs guaranteed not gonna work. Like high level D, D, yeah, exactly. Most players not gonna work. Um, so like, let's take it back to that phrasing of a fourth level spell in this ninth level spell, and let's make it do. I don't know, like like you said, Greg. Like the CC, especially when combat rounds at the far out end are going like five rounds. So a CC at ninth level when you can cast things like Meteor Swarm or Wish that are going to end the combat on the spot, right? Give me, I don't know, anyone within like five feet of the, the affected creature has like advantage on their attack rolls because the creature can't perceive anything else but the weird, like whatever they're seeing. Or like... Uh, they get critically hit on like a 19 or a 20 because they're easier to hit or something that like helps the party and not just like, like you said, Greg, debuffs don't have like this really, really short half-life as far as their effectiveness goes in combat. So just, just ideas for people to take and you don't have to, this is not like, the the be all end all of rules you guys can absolutely shift things at home if at any time you think this is dumb or this is not in the power level i would like it to be uh especially when you have like if you're a dm like we are and you have uh people in the party that you're playing with at your table who are like okay i'm at 18th level Sh give us all you got dm and it's really hard to kill them anyway if you give this on like a lich or a dragon that can cast magic, like go, go nuts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, yeah I think it's, cool. sorry, it, it, one last thought. It's just letting letting things be as powerful as they should be and not, not trying to predict the circumstances of its use ahead of it being used, you know, because Meteor Swarm is that. It does use this crazy powerful spell that has a huge range and 
um, a massive AOE and does a ton of damage. And like, that's not problematic. But for some reason with weird, they're like, well, we don't want it to be too strong. And it, it kind of, it gets- For like a 30 foot, for 30 yeah. foot area. They're a 30 foot area. And that's like, but you know, you have things like Firestorm, which affects way more distance than that, you know? And it, like, and 10d6 Psychic, Sorry, is that is that the amount of damage it does? Yep. Yeah, 10 d 10, 10 psychic, 10, sorry. 10 10. But like 10 that's 10. weak sauce for a ninth level spell. Let's like, you only get one of those in a day and you're gonna use it on 10 d 10 psychic damage and frightened? Nah. <laughs> nah, dude, I'm gonna no, use that like, for it's like stronger. on average sixty damage, and then what's the on average damage of meteor swarm? A lot. Uh, a More lot. Than that. More than that, more than Hold 60. on, I'm going to actually look it up here just to make sure we're not being assholes. Yeah, it's 40 D6 damage. <laughs> 20 fire, 20 plus, so it's, I think, right? Yeah. So it's double, four times. right? Four times. It's, oh, wait, no, it's D6s. Never mind. It's well, yeah, so it would be it'd be four four times 40. So 160. Yeah, so 60 versus 160 average damage. <laughs> like, what? My, my ninth <laughs> level, I would take Wish, and I would cast Wish to make Weird a better spell. Oh, damn. <laughs> so, I think that, that nailed it. That nailed it. Let's move on. I got a question for you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got What's one, your guys. Question? What's your question? Um, have you guys seen Tasha's Bubbling Cauldron? Uh, yeah. Fifth yeah. level conjuration spell to produce yeah. up to your spell casting modifier in common or uncommon potions, like a potion of healing. Like, guys, if you have six level spells, I think a and potion. And 500 of gold pieces. Yeah. yeah. 500. It's also... gold, a <laughs> gilded like, ladle. I Let feel me pull like... my gilded ladle out. I, I feel. Oh, it is a gilded ladle. For a 50. I've gold potion let me spend 500 gold yeah well is that consumed do you need to buy the ladle once or is it consumed it's cons uh, uh, it, it just says material component of a yeah i don't think ladle. yeah i don't think it's consumed i think you just keep yeah, using I think your just fancy want. ladle yeah i'm but submit but come on guys it's just but like it's, a sick yeah. level spell to make a potion of healing up to sorry up to like what potentially four or five potions of healings uh -huh. like come yeah on. up to five yeah and at that point a potion of healing is kind of like an out of combat heal right because mm -hmm. if you're if you're gonna quash a bonus action to get a potion of healing it's gonna not really do much for you um you'll probably be, you you'll want access to like greater healing or at least superior healing um superior if you're yeah, throwing around six level spells like come on yeah because even then a greater healing is kind of just a top off or like a keep you moving um because you, you just have more HP that a, a potion of healing is going to do too much. It's more gonna, of a drop in the bucket. I'm going to say the I the art for this uh th for this spell is pretty cool, but I do notice there's no ladle in her hand. Yeah, she's holding uh, a wand. Rude. It's holding a Rude. wand. She's not. She's not <laughs> well, you know what? It does ladle. use it uses up the um uh, it does use up the ladle the, the, it the use soup the ladle? it uses up the 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 bowl the spoon part of the ladle. Oh okay. Oh, so her, the wand, her wand was the handle of the ladle. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Actually. You dip it in and burn stuff. Man, this is kind of this is an interesting spell. Um, oh, hold on. Postage obtained from the cauldron that aren't consumed disappear when you cast the spell again. Okay, so never mind. So I was gonna say you can like downtime, just create a bunch of potions, and be like, now, I, now I have infinite healing potions, and that's actually kind of cool. Because uh, no, it no. like turns it, you into that witch it lasts kind of alchemist. You... Yeah, so so you can't. Again. They last until you cast again. So really, it we gives don't... you five potions of healing, and then it's done. It's it's like <laughs> if you want to play a witch, I don't know why we, you wouldn't just play Greg's way better version of one. Uh, thank you. Yeah, the the witch class is. I love that class. Oh, where can it's I one, get that? By the way, DM's Guild. Type. Yeah. Well, the, there's like a I, billion I witches. Like... I They're feel like actually this is like the fourth plug we've done for this. Yeah, <laughs> well, specific I, I class, like... yes. Honestly, yeah, at this cool. point, I'm just going to do it as a bit because it's funny to me. Well, <laughs> th there's that's it's actually. Can we can we talk about the witch more in general of of D and D's approach to a witch, which is not at all, and yeah. that's just it's it's Steve still it's Warlock criminal. Different. Yeah, and we've talked about it before, but it, it's it's really criminal that there's not a witch, especially when Tasha is a witch. Like her whole thing is that she's a witch. But she's not. And like, shut up, make a witch class. Like, why don't you have one of these? Just just do it. I don't care if some people are gonna say you're copying Pathfinder, because Pathfinder copied D D. Just make a witch. Just do it. Commit to yeah. it. Which witch is which? That's the real question. It's the witch. 
It's the answer to your question. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually in D D <laughs> when you ask the question which which is the witch, it's none of the players. Honestly, none of the only, players only witch I care about is a sandwich right now. So I... oh goodness. Oh thank you. Thank you, Brendan, for, for taking us down this path with the <laughs> bringing up the weird spell. Um DJ, any spells you'd like to talk uh, about? Yeah, I feel like this one's gonna be pretty brief. Uh, prayer of healing. You can now use it for like a short rest. You gain the benefits of a short rest in addition to the uh 2d8 healing that you get. And I will say, uh, as just like a general note, uh, all of the healing spells that give you uh that like specifically heal you for HP instead of giving you just like a flat rate, uh, the base die have increased by one. So for uh, healing for healing word, instead of getting one d four at level one, you get two d four at level one. Um, I believe. Yeah. 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 They also and scale then, up as two d four. Yeah, than and 1D. then they also scale when you upcast them. Uh, that is mm -hmm. true for every healing spell, except or that acts in that way, except for, um, uh, uh, what are we talking about? What did I just say? <laughs> prayer of healing <laughs> yeah prayer of healing <laughs> don't, hey, don't. DJ, i can't drink red bull anymore but you but, but I, you should. I i don't i get jittery and i i can feel the molecules underneath my skin <laughs> when i drink energy drinks that's bad so uh, yeah. yeah that's why i don't that's why the only one i drink is yerba mate because it's natural quote unquote natural. Uh, but yeah, Prayer of Healing doesn't get the increased uh, that the other ones do, but it mm -hmm. also gains the benefits of giving you the effects of a long rest. Or well, none rest. of the um, none of the mass healing spells, anything that heals more than one creature at a time, scales oh. at the 2D, they all do 1D. So mass healing word, mass cure wounds, I'll do one additional dice because it's AoE. Whereas the, but their their base is increased, right? So mass but healing word does 2D4, okay. um, but it only scales by 1D4. So it's it's interesting. I mean, it, it, I get it. Uh, mass healing word is just to get people up from being unconscious anyway. You don't you rarely use that to actually like heal someone uh, to keep them to keep them conscious. But yeah, healing word and cure wounds th those are huge bonuses because it, it does encourage people to actually use healing more. I'm I'm a huge proponent that you should heal people before they go unconscious because you're turn taxing them if it gets their turn before they're up and you're losing action economy, which actually hurts you way more than just expending your spell slot to heal someone before they go to, go to zero. Mm -hmm. I've always thought that was a really silly way to uh, to heal or to keep people up or to like, kind of take advantage of game mechanics as opposed to playing the game. Yeah, because also like if you think about the narrative of it, right? It's like, hey, this is our friend, Steven. Uh, he dies every single combat, but don't worry, the cleric casts a single first level spell, and we have no ill, we have no ill like effects on it. We're not yeah, worried. Steven's we're not gonna be seeing... pissed. You know, he's yeah, gonna be like, Steve... "Could you not let me get my ass knocked out before you like use that healing spell every single time?" Like, yeah, yeah, but also it's like if you fall unconscious like three times in a combat encounter, and then you can walk away as functional as someone who like didn't take yeah. any damage there's like no problems yeah. like, congratulations yeah. you have to check if you have a tbi now <laughs> okay. yeah you should at least have a few concussions you know well apparently magic solves concussions i think it's yeah. well you know because we don't need doctors in D, &D apparently <laughs> Yeah, well, no, all injuries and everything's magic. Everything's magic. Just pray about it and feel good. Yeah, uh, fun fact. I... The CTE. Thank you, Race, for teaching me what TBI means. So I had never oh, actually yeah. heard that acronym before. Yeah. Indeed, yeah. yeah. Traumatic not brain fun. injury. Oh, TBI. Traumatic brain injury. Yeah, no, I, I just Googled it. Um, oh, I thought it meant no, to uh, be informative. Uh, what are you talking about? <laughs> I mean, it, it is kind of. But that is, that's like a really good, yeah, that's all, that's like a great point. It's like they kind of, they, they increased healing, but they didn't solve the underlying issue why people didn't use healing in the first place, which is, you know, when you have, when you failed to, when you're literally on the brink of death and you're about to, you can see your life flashing before your eyes and you literally were impaled with a sword, a cleric walks over to you and he goes, here you go, you're fine. You know, and you heal for like one hit point. You're back up, and you're like, "Ha! I'm ready to go." The fact Nothing that bad happened to me re fully replenishes your health is the stupidest thing in the world. Yeah, like you just you go to sleep and you wake up and you're like, "I am better today." That mm. sword wound meant nothing to me. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. go to, you go to you go to bed with one HP. You wake up and your bones are magically put back into place. <laughs> yeah, like it is. It is the, kind of ridiculous that you can have 250 hit points. 
and you take 249 points of damage and your DM might narrate it as you, your eye got ripped out of your skull, but you, know, you wake up in the next morning and you're like, huh, my eye is back and I feel great. As a matter <laughs> like, of fact, I have 20-20 vision now. <laughs> what was that, Riz? I'm a fan of lingering injuries. The lingering injuries. Yeah, I, but but the thing is, is the system doesn't account for it. So like, that's the underlying issue of people not using healing, right? Because there's there's no narrative disadvantage to being knocked unconscious. There's no, you know, physical disadvantage. There's no mechanical disadvantage. You just lose your hit points, and then you you get back up and you're totally chill. And and that's kind of like, if you, if you had lasting any any lasting consequence, even just in the encounter. Like, for instance, if your death saves lingered Ooh. until the encounter was over, you bet your ass everyone's going to be blowing their healing on keeping you up. That's because if you, when I get to higher mm -hmm. level stuff, that's what I do is I say, yeah, your death saves are cumulative till the next long rest. Yeah, like in that case, you're going to see. So, like, you can solve heal the healing issue. You don't have to buff healing. You can just solve the issue that causes people not using it in the first place. Mm-hmm. You know, it is one of those things where, like, some people are like, oh, yeah, well, you know, when, when I do D&D &D and I talk about hit points, it's not them taking, like, actual damage. It's them, like, winding themselves down or, like, getting more tired every time they have to dodge an attack and not instantly be killed. And I was like, that's an interesting way of thinking about it. But when you look at the examples they give in the actual book for, you know, the semi-AI generated, like, here's how an example of, like, combat happens, like, they're getting the shit smacked out of them, and then they're like, yeah, I just took seven damage yeah. from being solidly hit by a skeleton. I'm like, yeah, so people to are it. getting wrong, hit. Though. You are getting <laughs> actually hit, which means that you are then, in a long rest, healing completely from, you know, oh, my internal injuries. Like, yeah, it's... I don't... I don't know if they kept this over from 2014, but I do remember this was in 2014 where mm. the first half of your hit points were considered to be quote unquote endurance mm. and anything under half your hit points was considered to be like your actual vitality or your vitae, so to speak. Um, so that like that was kind of in there, but that, that still was kind of lame because it's all hit points. Like it's all your your life force right so and, yeah and like there's a really interesting thing that could be done with that where what we were just talking about how like long rest you shouldn't be able to recover all of your hit points but if we're doing your half of your hit points is your fatality half is your stamina maybe you regain the half of your stamina that that you uh lost during that last encounter but you have to spend several days healing and recovering the last half of your hp well, appreciate. Uh, I like that approach. There's a lot of there's a, a system I'm really a, a fan of. Once again, shout out to Fetty Scum, uh, Adam, the DM of that, uh, designed his own rules for like mech combat. You know, you have your armor, then you have your frame. You know, stuff like that. Like it's easy to repair your armor, but you have damage to your frame. That's going to take some time. Stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, that's again. I, I'm I'm going to plug this a little bit because it's the system I'm working on, and I'm going to be throwing it to a kickstarter soon but i actually have that fixed with you have endurance you have hit points mm -hmm. and your hit points are a static thing that are based off of your ability scores and level that doesn't scale as you level um well it scales minorly so like your hit points are your constitution score plus your level and that's that's your hit points that's what they are they're always low basically right um and your endurance is what you get every level so when you gain a level you get your endurance you roll like your hit dice in D, &D and that's that stacks on top of itself so eventually you have you maybe have 200 endurance but you might still only have 40 hit points and those are hard to get back so like and that's the same concept right where it's like your your actual physical body is to be protected and it's dangerous but you do weather the blows ahead of time so instead of saying oh, the first hit in combat is you get impaled, it's someone smashed into your armor really hard and you're dazed for a moment, and that reduced your endurance. And, and that actually gives you like, a, oh, okay, so I'm not actually losing hit points, I'm not losing yeah. blood, I'm just getting worn down. And in that case, when you get healing, it restores your endurance, and you're like, okay, now I'm ready to fight more. And then once you lose all that endurance, that's when something impales you with a sword and it's a big deal. And you're like, oh, shit. I just lost 20 hit points. I only have 25. I'm not going to be able to get those hit points back for maybe a week. It's a big deal. So like that, that's the kind of thing where it's like, it, it creates a, a narrative uh, kind of urgency as well. And it, it creates those moments where like, get like in the movie where you have these two guys and they're going 
run back and forth and they're fighting and whatever how inaccurate it is but then suddenly someone gets impaled and you're like oh no something actually happened and that that's kind of what we're looking for as far as this goes and is concerned because like uh, you know uh, technically with a barbarian in in this edition or any of 5e really uh you get impaled like 17 times and you're like bring it I'm too mad to care. Like, yeah, I'm right. so mad that it didn't impale me that bad. You're right. It's whatever. It's a minor impalement. Just come over here and hit me with a healing spell, bro. I'll be fine. Minor impalement is actually the name of the punk band I was in when I was. <laughs> in high school. It's, a, it's a pretty punk name, actually. Yeah, that one's not bad. As opposed to my favorite metal band, Major Impalement. Impalement. Yeah. That's the, that, that's why after we signed to a label, you know. <laughs> that was actually that was actually my uh, commanding officer back in the Marines. Major impalement. <laughs> God damn it! Why are we all five? Yeah, but <laughs> no, I mean, we should probably we should probably move on. Is there? Does anybody else have? This is actually Dan's job. I'm doing Dan's job for once. Does anybody else have spells? I mean, yeah, no worries. I just enjoyed listening to all of you as I was trying to recall. There was somebody. You know, one of the various D and D YouTubers, who, by the way, I'm not gonna lie, I feel like 80 percent of like clickbait D and D YouTubers either willingly ignore how rules work to tell everybody how cool their build or how they like <sighs> messed with their players. I, I can't it like, like the, it's a huge problem in general. But D&D it was is a, is a problem. <laughs> somebody was talking about the 2024 rules. Something about a mask spell that I'm trying to fine because somebody was talking about like an interaction between uh planar binding uh suggestion and some other spell that i was like that doesn't actually oh wait um oh yeah oh, it's, it's nistel's the, the magic nistel's aura, aura? Yeah, yeah nistel's yeah. aura is one that's one it's the mask effect of nistel's aura and somebody was like yeah like this is this is how we can make them like permanently like planar bind to anything if we use them with suggestion to make them except the mass part of so many different spells and i was like that's that's stupid um but i mean i think it i think there's like yes it technically works but it's also one of those things where you have to kind of work around the idea that something is achievable or like how they've rephrased suggestion between like reasonable and achievable so on and so forth uh dj Oh, I'm sorry. I was just stretching, but I was going to say you have to play the game in bad faith for that to work. Yeah, basically. Um, really but I will say yeah. one thing that annoyed me is I was reading a this is a bit of a tangent. I was reading an article that somebody was posting about like what's the lowest CR creature that made like a party of high level adventurers worried. And somebody was talking about the ice toads from Tales of the Yawning Portal. And it's like a CR3 creature, and they're like, it's, it's so deadly because it has this cold aura that automatically deals damage when anything is within five feet of it. And they were like, yeah, so you just surround them with like a dozen toads and it's like 12 D10. And I was like, that's not how that works. It's the exact same effect. You can't <laughs> double that same effect yeah. on the, on a, like it doesn't suddenly get yeah. colder. It doesn't drop it to the point of like near Kelvin, like point, like zero point coldness or whatever. I, I don't forget all my chemistry terms. Um, Absolutely. But I was like, I was like, thank you. I was like, that's not how that works. So this person was bragging an article about how great these ice toads were because they're CR3. I was like, they, you were bragging about them because you did the game wrong. Like, you specifically Silence brutalized your players. <laughs> you brutalized your players by ignoring how the rules work. So many d d like, influencers, YouTubers, whatever you want to have it, they, that it's such a problem where there's very few of them that have actual, like, long-term experience and they've, like, mm-hmm. read the rules and understand the game and they'll come out and be like this is a crazy combo that you can pull up with other and it's just like you're first you're wrong and like it, it, it doesn't usually work that way My, the most recent example i had of this was in the camp discord shout out to the company we all actually work for and doing this for uh somebody posted something about a uh, mate hunter and i like this guy mostly because he's, he's been trying to be active in the discord which uh, it's so difficult to do but any but this guy in the in the the video post that was going out with the mage hunter and like oh it's it's so like it, you can do all these crazy things with it and it's like really strong and powerful and it can like hunt down your mages and create this thing like and if you actually look at the mage hunter first off it, it like to use basically what this creature does is it marks mages and whenever they cast a spell it like tracks them down um, but this creature really isn't that scary. Like it's it's for its CR, it's got general hit points where your players can turn around and beat the crap out of it. Um, it its abilities really aren't like it only works when it's close to you, so you kind of know it's there 
for the most part. And, and if when we were level you, four, it was scary, Dan. Yeah, and and a, and a mark. Well, <laughs> okay. maybe a little bit. And maybe <laughs> it's because it I murdered you. Father Achilles right out of the gate with it. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty hilarious. Scary. Um, I think he was like level three, not four. Anyway, yeah, but the, yeah. so the thing is, thing is, is that. Sure, if if you put a high CR creature against any low level party, it's going to be scary. But yeah. it, like the way that this creature is constructed isn't nearly as terrifying as this influencer made it sound like, and and that's kind of the, that's the problem we're talking about here is the distortion of the game for influence for you know for the for that like distortionate like influencer effect, mm -hmm. which is really kind of problematic. And it, what it ends up doing that I, I hate is it turns your players and it makes them expect these things. Whereas maybe a seasoned or veteran DM who's actually running these games on a regular basis will be like, well, it doesn't work like that. You know, and maybe your players are expecting it to work like that, but then they run their game and they're like, well, why doesn't it do this? It's like, cause it never did. Yeah. You know, uh, people <laughs> using beholders incorrectly when it comes to their anti magic tone is deeply frustrating, especially in fifth edition. Um, where they're like, Can Yeah, it's just. On... Oh. Can you expound on that, Dan? Yes. So, like, first off, a lot of people ignore the bit in the anti magic cone rule where it says the area works against the beholder's own eye rays. Um, so, there are a lot of DMs who will talk about how, like, yeah, you just put the anti-magic cone on them and all of a sudden they can't use their spells or magic abilities and then you just hit them with the death ray a bunch of times and i was like that's that's none of the rays go through the anti-magic cone that's a very particular part of it <laughs> like that's that's literally how it works or also like you know people deciding to not use the randomness of the eye rays which i'm actually generally okay with that because you know if that's how you want to run your game like that's fine um, but, like, also, the Beholder decides which way the cone faces, or whether it's even active, the start of each of its turns. Because people are like, yeah, every time, like, you smack it, it can just turn around and look at you. And I was like, no. that's They are very, very specific about how you can use that cone. People just kind of, I don't know if it's like a reading comprehension thing. We talked about it's how, like, a lot of... Thing. Like, a lot of Americans have the average reading of, like, a sixth grader. Sixth grade, um, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's... Which, yeah, that's rough. But What's it's like that? it's like, or is it willfully just ignoring how it works? You know, I don't Probably know which one is more to both, blame. Honestly, yeah. it's it's like Too a true. it's a it's a dual set thing. Yeah, I've actually encountered holders, that yeah. with my novel with a cell six kid reading where people will complain to me about the the um. The I didn't know what's usage. going on. Yeah, or like, oh, I don't understand what's happening, or like these words are too big. I'm like, I don't. That's not. That's a you problem. Yeah, that's um, a you problem. <laughs> like that that that's a you problem. I'm gonna dumb down my my diction because you you can't look up a, a google it or look it up in a dictionary yeah no problem it's yeah beholders i've had a group of like four i think maybe five players were level 10 and only had like maybe a couple of items that didn't go beyond like very rare magic items very tactical players just absolutely beat the shit out of a beholder and the only reason they had trouble is because i was using a very vertical environment because beholder just levitate everywhere so they don't need floors in those places so that was really the only thing that gave them a challenge but everyone's out there and you're like i pissed my pants took fighting a beholder because the eye ray just made it so i couldn't do anything the whole game and i was like that sounds like a user absolutely that is do yeah, a but... lot of dms you need to remember that you need to factor these changes into a creature's behavior into its difficulty because a beholder is designed that its eye rays are random if you remove that you take out the randomness and you hit the same player three times in a round with the petrification ray, they're probably going to fail that. And that makes that encounter a lot harder. Very it, rude. That, that, yeah, it, it's first off, why are you such an asshole? But second off, it, it, it does change the, the difficulty of the monster. Because if that's random, you know, you're probably going to get uh, the force one, or you might get the death ray, or you might get this, or you might get the petrification every now and again. But you know, a player's pro out of out of six rolls, they're gonna fail one. You know, and if you just keep hitting them with the same roll over and over again, then yeah, that that makes that much more difficult of an encounter. So you really need to factor that into your your overall design of an encounter. I will also say there are a lot of people who misinterpret the charm ray about what it means to be charmed by the beholder for an hour if you fail the wisdom save. And it literally just means the definition of the charmed condition, which means you mm -hmm. can't attack the thing that charmed you or you know target it with damaging abilities or magical effects, and it has advantage on ability checks to interact with you. That doesn't necessarily mean you're going to turn around and start beating the shit out of your party. Like, okay, 
that is the definition of the charmed condition, right? Sure. Would in your game, let's say you are running that beholder against those players, like you said, would a charmed uh, PC understand that they could buff a party member, which would indirectly harm the beholder? You know, I would say that would be if they haven't experienced being charmed before, that would be something similar to like an insight check or that would be a role. In my opinion, that would be, that would be a role. A role. Okay. I will also say this. I would say that especially if maybe a beholder in some way has been observing the party, maybe the beholder can persuade, you know, to obviously take an action to do so, to persuade somebody they've charmed to act on inter-party conflict and maybe attack their fellow players that way, but not an automatic domination. Hey, on your turn, just start casting, you know, cloud kill on your own party with no thought of, you know, fireball centered on yourself. <laughs> exactly. Like that's not how that would work. But the, I think there are definitely ways you can make it interesting to have fun with it. But so many people don't think of it from that perspective. They're like, yes, yeah, so you're charmed. You're, you're going to now do exactly whatever I want to as the DM. Like, I'm going to tell you to like suddenly chop off your, your buddy who's been your friend for forever's head that you have no inner party conflict with. And it happens. It's, it is what it is. Um, I think it's, it, it can be cool if, they, if you're like, hey, I have a special beholder. It's not casting a charm ray. It is casting like a dominate spell of some kind. Like that is different if you choose to alter the stat block that way. But I've seen a lot of people who don't make that distinction and they're like, yeah, if you're charmed, then I'd make you do whatever I want. I saw, That's just yeah, not how it works. I saw a really good example. Uh, once again, it was another actual play. Mm -hmm. uh, the the PCs were in like a chase, and they were getting chased by enemies. Mm -hmm. And one of the enemies charms one of the PCs in the car. And he goes, you're my friend, so I'm not going to physically stop you. But I think we should talk this out with them. As like they're in the middle of like a high speed chase and all this shit, but like he's charmed, he's not gonna actively start assaulting his his team because he doesn't do that because that's not his character, and there sure. weren't like any like actual like inbuilt character conflicts. But essentially, him being charmed was him being like, yeah, we should we should hash it out. You know, we're all friends here. Mm -hmm. That's a great example. Yeah, thanks, DJ. That's perfect. Anyway, that's just that's just. I, I we kind of got sidetracked because I started talking about suggestion, the Nistel's magic aura, and you know so on and no, so forth. I think forth, that was a good one, though. It is. It is. I think a thing that is a common as we as these rule talks rules talks were intended to be general topics when we first started them before the twenty twenty four book came out. It is just a frustrating thing when you know. In I I don't know whether it's about whether it's a frustration because like hey you know is it just because somebody's willfully not understanding and they don't seem to want to understand other people that comment like maybe you misinterpreted this and then they don't change and they release the exact same video like two months later or it's somebody who's posting about how the necromancer is so op in fifth edition because they don't understand that if you use the 14th level ability again most people never getting to the 14th level ability you know it ends where you can you know mind control essentially an undead it, essentially ends on that if you choose to do it on a new undead. So if you only really get one buddy at the same time, and if they're smart, they're probably going to not be your buddy after about 24 hours or one hour or however long it is. But yeah, it is it is frustrating when people, you, you know, you might say something like, hey, like that may not work the way you think it does. It Like and if you're interpreting it this way, like raw, this is actually how those rules work. And they're like, um, I don't care, or I'm going to keep doing it this way because I get, like, clout points on the internet for it. And that can be a little bit sad, especially as I you see D&D &D becoming, game. like, larger and larger access to people with more people becoming interested in it. A lot of people are getting, I don't want to say led astray, but exactly what Greg said earlier, like, it doesn't do what you think it does. And they'll really play it beef, sells not, beef, beef equals downloads, so drop those names, Dan. <laughs> What's, I don't, what's really frustrating... I don't remember because I didn't care about it. <laughs> the, the distortion here isn't necessary because the everything as it is is just as interesting as people distort it to be. Where you don't need that that extra bit of of emphasis or uh, hyperbole on top of it. You can literally just use and I see that a lot with like especially Hollywood and movies and like fight scenes, especially sword fights, where they go out of their way to like try to make them dynamic and like cinematic or storytelling but like actual sword fighting 
in a lot of instances is way more impressive, interesting, or or fun to watch than the crazy Hollywood movies. Like every time you see like a, a, a badass warrior, especially like Geralt and the Witcher, do a spin attack, you're like, Geralt, you're dead. Because <laughs> in, in, in the second that it takes you to spin, it's so easy to move a sword and just to poke someone. Remember, you don't full force hit someone with a sword to do damage. You literally just need to poke them. If you touch them with the blade and apply slight pressure, it kills someone. You know, you don't really need to do a ton for that to work. So like, but there there are moves that exist. So it's especially like HEMA. If you've ever watched like HEMA videos where you're fighting with that, that can be so cool. And it looks so dynamic and it's accurate. And like, you don't need to distort it. To make it cool, you can actually just like really lean into the the historical sword fighting or what it looks like, and it's the same. You don't need to distort the game or its mechanics to make it cool or interesting. You can actually do the work and put in some time and not just expound on and like really look at what it is and talk about that. And that's just cool. And thought. <laughs> and thought. <laughs> And standing ovation. <laughs> Thank you for coming yeah. to my TED Talk. <clears throat> reality is cool, too. Sometimes. sometimes. I, mean, I, I, I refute <laughs> well, that reality statement, sucks, but... Greg, actually. <laughs> let, let, okay, let's put it this way. The reality of a concept can be just as cool as your yeah, distorted version go. of it. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Indeed. Oh. All right. Uh, really, the only thing that I have left is... Yes, we. There have been some things that are changed, like I think bark skin and maybe some of the other. You know, you mm. get free AC from spells that have gone up, like a single AC point. Um, we've mentioned how a lot of the heal spells have increased. There, there are other spells that have gone up by a damage die here or there. You know, vicious mockery, fantastic example of that. A little more viable now with a D6 instead of a D4 compared to all the other cantrips. Really, I think the only thing that's left that we haven't either talked about in other sessions is the new animate objects, which, in my opinion, is a little bit worse. You know, animate objects used to be like, hey, tiny through huge objects, you get, I think, what was it, like 10 it charges? Ten it was 10 uh, charges, and then it scales based on the size. Yes. Yeah, mediums, I think, counted as two. If you go all the way up to huge, it counts as eight, which, you know, you know they've done something similar in terms of how many things you can have for the new one, where now the number of objects is equal to your spellcasting modifier, and huge counts as three, large as two, and then medium or smaller are still one object. And there's no real distinction, because I don't know about you, but there was something really funny having a bunch of tiny objects swarm the dickens out of somebody, um, yeah. which again is, we go back to that thing about like, hey, that really bogs down the action economy, that's really obnoxious, especially if you're not just having like one roll and then just applying it throughout. You're rolling an initiative and a and an attack roll for every single one of these objects. That's obnoxious, but it does feel a little sad to me that there's no distinction between medium or smaller in terms of. Again, they're using that sort of scaling snap block where you know medium is this, large is this many hit points. You know, you get this plus your spellcasting ability for how much damage they do. It just feels like. We lost a little bit of the magic, and I, we've kind of already talked about that in terms of how a lot of these spells have lost some cool things, like the enhance ability. They lost a lot of cool flavor, um, but it just it just made me a little a little sad that the animated you know, animate there, objects went down a little bit. Go ahead, Greg. It's actually some advice for some DMs. If you uh, have trouble dealing with um, multiple creatures and all their attack rolls on the field, like say animate objects where there's like 10 of them, you can use, I like to call it my focus fire rules essentially, where you take the number of creatures there are in a swarm, so to speak, that's attacking. It's like say you have eight creatures surrounding one creature and you don't want to roll 16 attacks. Instead, you add, um, you, can add, you can take one attack and then give that bonuses. So maybe a plus one per creature that's doing the attack to hit and then plus two per damage per creature. So you still have have pretty much uh, they're gonna probably hit um, and they're gonna deal a lot of damage but it's gonna be less than all 16 creatures hitting all the time and it kind of averages out yeah um, the math tends you know to work maybe out. yeah maybe eight of them hit eight of them don't one gets a crit most of them miss you know so like that you can kind of where you can just make one attack roll and then give it bonuses based on the number of creatures in there and that solves a lot of these problems uh, with, with multiple creatures and all that, if you can't handle them on their own. I think you're, with animated objects, yeah, you do kind of, you 
it goes against the idea of the spell, which is very much the Beauty and the Beast, all the you know animated objects attacking the the mob, right? Um, where if you just have like one stove, it's not as effective as all of the knives. Right. The fact that you can no longer do the Mickey Mouse uh, fan was a Fantasia thing. Yeah, yeah. With all the brooms. Oh, With yeah. all the brooms. Yeah. You can only have five brooms now. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. just like it, it. Again, it kind of it dumbs down the the intent of the spell to make it bite size and manageable. When it can, there's already other ways to make it manageable. It's again, you're dictating people how you want them to play this game rather than letting them figure it out themselves and just providing the core. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Um, uh, I will say as we as we leave off, I know we were talking about we talked about guidance. Uh, it is interesting. Resistance no longer gives bonus to saving throws and is now instead a weird form of a absorb elements cantrip that is what the new resistance is it gives you a little bit of damage reduction to a particular element and is no longer a bonus to saving throws um yep. some people might argue that's better because you don't have to worry ahead some people are having issues with like the planning ahead for using resistance um against uh, in, in favor of a saving throw um but yeah, uh, it's a good. concentration spell that reduces uh, certain types of damage by 1d4 that spell is not going to get any use no, yeah. like like resistance was good because it was one of the few things that it was like a, it was a cantrip, but it gives you saving throws, which was pretty cool. It's also it was still super situational. Now it is even more situational. Yeah, like, and it only you can only benefit it once per turn. Once so per it's, turn, it's really kind of lame. For honestly, a D four, and it doesn't scale. Like maybe if it's scaled. Like, if, if it's starting to reduce damage instead of, like, increasing, like, saves, maybe you have it scale. So, like, at 5th level, you can reduce 2d4 if that 10th level. You know? But it doesn't. So, it's like... It doesn't why, do that. Why would you pick it up at, like, if you don't pick it up at 1st level when a d4 could actually determine the difference between life and death, you sure as shit ain't gonna take it at 12th level when a d4 is the fucking sneeze. I can drop in a bucket. Take, yeah, I can sneeze and take a D4 of damage. Sometimes I do. So yeah, 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 say it. <laughs> yeah. somebody whose uh, inner nose cauterization didn't really take as a child, uh, I oh, still okay. occasionally sneeze really hard and get a nosebleed. Um, but with that, uh, yeah, I think that's. I think we're about done for the day. Thank you to Dan, everyone. I love so it when you bring out the science words that we have no idea what they mean. It's so cool. Oh, sorry. You said you said <laughs> cauterize, and my first thought was, have you tried getting a blowtorch in there and just finishing it up? You know. Oh god, no. It's a, it's a it's chemical cauterization. Oh. Um, but with that, uh, thank you so much to everybody who uh, has listened to us um, blather on about spells today. And we'll be excited to get your feedback on what spells you care about that didn't get reprinted or ones that you do care about that got altered in a way you don't like. So I don't really think there's any totally new spells outside of things like Sorcerer's Burst, for example. Um, Our word Fortify, which is kind of lame. Yeah, that, so we'll, 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 we can't wait to hear your takes on these spells because obviously we didn't do every single spell <laughs> because that would have been mind-numbing. Um, but uh, yes, thank you all so much for listening and we're excited to talk to you again next time. Say goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. I love everybody. all of you. Take care of yourselves, people. That's not what he told us to say. Oh, God. <laughs>